and welcome to episode 398 of the Awesome Comics Podcast, the place where the small press makes one hell of a big noise. I'm Vince Hunt, and joining me as always is the creator of the webcomic Vanguard, Dan Butcher. Hello. And he's one of your five a day, and always good for your immune system, it's Tony Esmond. I like to have five a day. <laughs> We're not going to ask what five. You stallion. <laughs> 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 welcome to the show everyone uh first off before we get going um big thanks to tom curry for jumping in last Cheers, week, on last week's episode uh, a fantastic episode he's if got a have... gift on the way a little gift on the way to him if you haven't listened already go go back and, and listen to it now just do a double bill of last week and, and mm. today's um but yes that was great and we've got another um great show for you this week as well with some extra guests that we'll announce in a, in a little bit but no i've i'm rested i'm recovered um recuperated yeah the book the books i was going to talk about last week i've i've got got handy here to talk about this week so i'm all well and good and how are my co-hosts today i'm living the dream yeah i'm doing pretty good yeah Not pretty us, pretty good <laughs> <laughs> you know what else is pretty good comic house yeah. Oh yeah, our lovely sponsors, Comic House, the indie comic marketplace that loves indie comics as much as we do, and you lovely people listening at home. If you uh, haven't heard about them, then um, this may be the first episode you ever listened to, <laughs> because we talk about them every week. Literally every week. There's a huge yeah. selection of titles on the Comic House database. If you self-publish, you can list your book on there. It's another avenue to get your work out to the world, but there's the digital app, which is full of amazing indie comics and small press publications from all over the world creators from not just from the uk but from america australia and just beyond every everywhere um it's only three pounds a month basically like uh, netflix or whatever i mean i used to say it's like netflix for comics and that became a bit of a thing so i tried to step away from that unfortunately <laughs> unfortunately that's the only way you can really describe a subscription service for yeah. these, these days but basically only three pounds a month which is cheaper than most digital comics that you get on a weekly basis mm. uh, or some that you would get on a Kickstarter, but that's another conversation entirely. And, uh, yeah, you get access to an enormous and ever-growing library of digital indie comics that some stuff we've talked about in the past, some stuff we've talked about in the present, probably stuff we'll talk about in the future, because it's always nice to just jump yeah. in and read some comics mm-hmm. sometimes. Now, there's a 14-day free trial. If that sounds good to you, there's a 14-day free trial to find out more. And thank you to Pete and the Comic House Gang for supporting the show, Here's as Pete. always. Um, all our uh, comics are on there the majority of them yes. yeah don't let yes. that put you off there's some other good comics on there yeah. Yeah. some readable ones on there as well <laughs> yeah there was, there was, yeah, there was also readable ones as Tony <laughs> said so if you want to find out more go to comichouse.com yes yeah, so this week's show we're um, stepping back into the the sort of um, on full south London my friends full <laughs> south London the DIY scene I was going to say zine scene but it works that's cool yeah. that works got some Captain okay. Serious chat as well Captain, Captain Sensible. Sensible. Captain Sensible. Sensible. Captain Sensible. Captain that Serious, well. that's us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah there's, a li- there's a little bit of info about Dan's life. There's um, <laughs> Where he went to school. Just where he went to school. <laughs> all kinds of things. But no, where we he lost a, his virginity. But um, we that's had not a, in there. A great, <laughs> <laughs> that's a whole... Yeah, it's happened. Go, that's, go, that, that's go sign up for the Patreon <laughs> for that story. One day, one day, hopefully. Yeah. That, and, Can we uh, get fucking uh, money off of OnlyFans? Amount of time? We make one OnlyFans joke. <laughs> at least uh, every show. week yeah yeah yeah, yeah. But... we got an email was from someone with an only fans account this week didn't we did we i'm gonna reply to it on the twitter dms oh okay furiously opens twitter <laughs> yeah <laughs> while dan's furiously <laughs> opening that yeah before we get to uh the wonderful um interview <laughs> that's upcoming we have uh a bit of news as well. Big news. I say Massive. Big, say big news. Large news. So big. Huge. And girthy news. <laughs> ah. This is because you edited a bit out when Dan made it sound like a knob. Yeah. <laughs> but this is news that definitely you're going to want to insert into your calendars. Lifestyle. Because, um, yes, we have news of what, gents? I'm going to do the trumpets. Come on, you're supposed to do the it's, announcement oh, while I'm sorry. doing the trumpets. It's the, uh, oh. the, li- the ACP live show, or the 400th episode. On the 26th of this month, in just two short weeks, if you're listening yes. to this on the day, well, less than two weeks, if you're listening to this on the day of release, we'll be having a live one. Right, okay. I'm going to, 26th of February, 2023, 
is when yeah. we are recording yeah. episode 400 of the Awesome Comics Podcast. 400. Fuck so, yeah, no. So, we'll be letting you you crazy people in the in the room for yes. it. Yes. So we're going to have a little bit of um, some audience participation, some questions and stuff like that. And um, Think of the bragging rights these people are going to have. Say, yeah. I was on the Awesome Comics Podcast. Or it might, it'll, it'll probably be something they leave off their CV. Yeah, pretty want to mention yeah. mention yeah. that person. Yeah. That's a that's a deal breaker. Yeah, yeah. But of course, why should I give you this job? Yeah. Well, I'll tell you why. Yeah, yeah. I said knob on the ACP. So, so um, we're going to be um, basically it's going to be a bit of comics fun and a, a sort of a Q and A sort of episode and, and basically just awesome comics talk with uh, some some of you lovely people joining us. Hmm. So put that um, details in your calendars and uh where can people find out more about it it's going to be on the slack i think uh, it'll probably be on the facebook page as well um we're going to send out the link that'll be live at some point before the show but we'll, yep. don't worry we'll trumpet that one as well but there'll also be a questionnaire going around which, which will just stop people you know asking ridiculous questions on the day which we know is going to happen i've got my eye on a couple of you yeah um, <laughs> We do actually yeah. want to talk about comics because otherwise, it's, <laughs> yeah, yeah. this is, is an absolutely worthless piece of audio we'll have if we're just like a bunch of people ch- just laughing. Tony, at each other. why I mean, are you such a wanker? <laughs> you that's know, the yeah. uh, that's why we have the drinker draws for those events. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but no, it's going to be interactive. Yes. We'll get a chance yeah. to have a chat, and it, that's what the point of it is, man. That's you know, it's giving that, back because we, you know, thanks to everyone is, who supported us. Question yeah. is about like you posing a question so we can get you on, and you ask that question live. As we yeah. record, yeah. So. and I think the, the 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 point of asking a question, us seeing it in advance, is sometimes thinking time helps with an answer. You yeah. know, mm-hmm. I hate uh, uninformed answers, and if some some things might, you know, we might have to have a chat about it, might have to yeah. think about, you know, yeah. that sort of thing. And I think that can be useful, you know. And that obviously, we've got some lovely listeners, you lovely yeah. listeners, and we're looking forward to uh, chatting to you and your questions. But also remember, this isn't going to go out live, so if you piss us off, I'll just cut you out. <laughs> right uh, unless you're funny unless yeah. you're funny <laughs> yeah. um, I, I'm not saying I'm a power mad god but uh, again the outtakes yeah yeah <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah and no, it but... will be on video but the, it will only be going out available on audio yes yeah. so we will you know all, all, we'll be able to see if you're you know if John Ottaway is murdering someone in the background yeah we're not we're or, not going to be holding yeah. up panels uh, pages of comics and going look at this because for you wonderful people that listen weekly that won't be able to join us um, we want you to enjoy it as well so mm-hmm. yeah and just be aware if you're going to ask us about a comic you know just holding it up won't work you have to describe it as well so yes. yeah. think Good about shout. what we're going to say it'll be a laugh though trust yeah, me. it'll be fun yeah. yeah it'll be a laugh yeah. and so episode 400 is here Look for the um, posters, the billboards. I mean, it's Super Bowl Sunday, and we spent quite a bit of money on the Super Bowl advert, didn't we? Did we, we did. We did. Was write, it Eels we... who had a one-second advert at one point? Do you remember that? The band who? Eels, didn't they have? Really? They had a one-second advert at the Super Bowl, didn't they? It cost them like ten grand or something. Fuck. Ten grand? No, 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 no. There's no way one second in a Super Bowl. <laughs> it like, might be more than that, but yeah, yeah, yeah. They, I remember them saying, I, uh, I don't know whether they did it or not, but it was certainly something they were trying to do. You know, that that's cool. Yeah. Very good. Yeah. What would you get for yeah. a, um, one second? At least it, actually, less than a picture with Dom. I'd probably do the old Tyler Durden. What's that? You know, like in, exactly, in what, exactly what you just yeah. said, Tony. Just he, he cuts one, in like a second of frame, pornog- pornography. Um, yeah. yeah. Uh, right, and kids yeah. films, and they're like, What? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's illegal, isn't it? Now to do that, um, because you remember these doing the young ones, didn't they? They yeah. know that. Oh, the about. subliminal kind of yeah, stuff, yeah. But yeah. That was innocuous, it wasn't like, Yeah, yeah. And I don't think now. you'd be able to get it. I, I don't think you'd be able to get it past many people, Dan. To be honest, I think that it's not like you pay your money and they're like, Yeah, yeah. we'll just put it up. They're not as unprofessional as us, where we're like, Yeah, yeah have you tried to get your dong past it. many people? Or, yeah. but <laughs> to be fair, I've <laughs> I want to see a prick on TV. I just turn it off and then look at the reflection. <laughs> just put dancing on that bombshell. On. On Should that we get into the interview? Yeah, let's get yeah. to the interview. Yeah, let's actually have some comics chat because we had the wonderful opportunity. I found this quite inspiring. This interview. Yeah, totally. I like listening to this. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's really good, and you will too, people. Um, so if you like your zines, your small press, and just independent publishing, and people who just love being creative and and sort of have stories to tell. Um, then you need to listen to the wonderful people from Colossive Press. Okay, this week we're very pleased to be joined by two folks from a great small press 
and zine publisher we've spoken about on the show a few times haven't we tony we have yeah and very recently as well indeed that publisher is colossive press and welcome to the show tom murphy and jane gibbons murphy hello oh, thank you very much thank you welcome nice to be That's here time. yeah I it's love it when people go, it's, it's nice to be here, because it makes it seem like like it's a real professional <laughs> outfit. Or <laughs> yeah, that we're in the same room, which some people yeah. believe. And we yeah, some of the time in the green room. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> believe yeah. some of the celebs we saw in there. Yeah. And plates for sandwiches as well, that was a bonus. Yeah, yeah I know, can you believe it? We don't it? always get that. Don't yeah. tell that person yes. from EastEnders. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, um, obviously... Some some of our listeners may not know who you guys are, but you've been around for uh, a few years now, I believe. So for those that don't know about Colossive Press and the work that you do, um, what's your origin story? Well, uh, that's probably me. Um, I mean, about, oh God, probably nearly 30 years ago, I sort of did a, some small press stuff under an imprint called Bliss Comics. Mm. I was in like the mid 90s. So I was doing a few bits and pieces there and then kind of drifted away from it. And then probably a, about 10 years ago, the sort of LCAF started up and there were events like the DIY cultures and I don't think what else there was. Paul Gravitt's small press oh, comic kept things, yeah. yeah. And I suddenly, like, you know, got, got back into the small press and then I was reading for a while and then I thought, well, you know, I was looking for sort of a, a, a creative outlet and thought I'd start trying to put together a few little, little zines and things. So I initially did High Precision Ghosts, which is like a little book arts fully out thing using found imagery and the um Croydon spaceport zine Ad, Ast- um, <laughs> Ad Astra Per Croydon the lost history of London's forgotten spaceport <laughs> which, and, which is uh, brilliant it's, it's, which it's, I know is like a grift you, snappy it's like title a, yeah it's a grift that you continue doing which makes me laugh you know because <laughs> I okay when you first when I first saw it I think I must have seen it in the early days of Twitter Tom I sort of thought because mm. I know there's a Croydon airport isn't there well, that was kind of the inspiration for it, yeah. Right, okay. And there's a, like a heritage centre there and they have tours, you know, because it was the original first London airport, was at Croydon. Right, after okay. After the war until Heathrow was sort of developed. Yeah, I did wonder. And and not saying you're old, Tom, but I know you, you've got a sort of, you've got a, a bit like myself, you've got a sort of, you go way back as a fan, don't you, as well? Oh, well, I guess so, yeah. I mean, I started reading stuff in, you know, in the 80s, really, and I was very lucky that just as I sort of discovered... Yeah, it was initially like everyone else, I guess, just stuff you could pick up at the news agents and whatever you could pick up around town. But yeah. then I sort of discovered the uh, Odyssey Seven, which was the, the the proper comic shop in Manchester, just as I got a, sat- a Saturday job at Morrison's, and that was just about nineteen eighty five, nineteen eighty six, when obviously things suddenly took off with peak comics, um, yeah. yeah, Dark Knight Returns, and you know I was reading American Flag at the time as well, and it was just all this fantastic <sighs> stuff that just sort of really hooked me in. And then, you know, it wasn't long before sort of Vertigo was taking off all the British invasion stuff. So, yeah, it was yeah. a great time to, to get into comics, yeah. Were you were you a big comic fan prior to Colossus, Jane, as well? Or um, We were talking about this the other day, and Tom introduced me to comics. All right. Um, and, I mean, it's a wonder we're still together because he handed <laughs> me a comic in a bag. And I just ripped it open without protecting the bit of sellotape that, you know. Yeah, the sellotape so the... stuck to the cover. Come and on. I've oh, never seen nightmare. anyone look so horrified. <laughs> um, but, yeah, in the 90s, I used to read, the com- you know, and look forward to things coming out like Flaming Carrot and all the sort of yeah. Uh, yeah. autobiographical things like Seth and that. And then I, I went off the boil a bit until sort of recent years but I mean, what Tom sort of missed out of the origins thing is that he, um, when he sort of reconnected about ten years ago, started reviewing comics for Broken Frontier. Yeah, and um, you know, like I said, going to El Caf and that, but really felt like I mean, Tom would behave, and I would almost believe it that he there was like this in crowd, and he was on the outside looking in, and that, that's what I'd really love to do. But of course. You know that's not a world I can ever enter, and and he'd be like, you know, you'd be pacing up and down the street, worried about going into comic fairs and talking to people, <laughs> and just feel like you know I'm not worthy. And then when I started going with him, and, and Tom had done the first couple of zines, I was like, uh? <laughs> you know, that, <laughs> there is no outside and inside. Like if you either do it or you don't, and. 
and I think you've just about taken that on board now, yeah, haven't you? That's yes. That's okay. <laughs> yeah. but... well, so where did what was that? You were a little bit intimidated by the crowds yeah. and stuff. Well, maybe? I guess so. Yeah, I don't know. Just the general yeah. social anxiety a lot of pe- a lot of people <laughs> have, you know. But you, I mean. Of- Back, back yeah. in the days of UCAC, I mean, I, I've t- many times told the story about like shitting my pants trying to speak to Chris Claremont and stuff like that. You know, there was that that did exist. You know? Yeah. Sometimes but, those uh, blokes would just be damn rude to you, and sometimes they'd be nice to you, and it was a sort of bit of a gamble on how they felt at that moment in time th- and how many drinks they'd had. You know. Yeah, I think it's also it does go like beyond those names though as well, because like when I first started, because I was just. I'm shy. It just and with people I don't mm. know, or I'm not comfortable with. It, it, it was difficult. So, I think with the small press and zine community being so open, you know, it builds your confidence when you approach like the first table and you you, you walk away thinking, oh, they were really nice. You know, we talk about the importance of being, you know, open to people coming to your table and, and being nice, and, and it really does help for people that aren't so confident about it. I mean, if I had gone to a, a, my first comic show. And everyone there was just really standoffish. This we probably won't be talking now. <laughs> I mean, it's as as yeah. No, I mean it is yeah. great. There's no kind of hierarchy, especially the yeah. small press stuff. I mean, yeah, even yeah. I don't know, like that we did our first thought bubble last year. You know, and just the fact the pros are just sat at their table, pretty much like anyone else. You know, there's not yeah. really a big velvet rope around them and stuff. I think we had that year with the velvet rope. <laughs> the, uh, we did. We had like a they had like a VIP area in the party, and everyone sort of moaned so much right. about it. <laughs> you know that, that that soon ended, thankfully. But yeah, I know what you mean, man. Yeah, it's it's become that I think much more in recent years. Yeah. You know, did did you go to cons in Manchester or comic marts and stuff like that? No, no, really, no, no. Uh, no, I just used to troll at the comic shop, and so every now and then you'd be all struck if there was Dale Coe, who used to write a load of letters to DC Comics in the 80s, he'd be there sort of propping up the <laughs> counter, chattering away, and he's like, oh, God, Dale Coe, big name fan, you know. Yeah. So what what was the um, the the reason that you started? Because there's, there's a lot of different stuff in Colossive, isn't there? There's yeah. scenes <laughs> and prose and comics and, Eclectic, you know. yeah. But just yeah. whatever seems like a good idea at the time, and, you know. Yeah, I like that. If you yeah. think that'll, yeah. that'll support or whatever. 20 page zine and just just rally it off you know just like writing a song or something you just have a notion and something you think will will support a zine and and see it through yeah so like you say, there's no great right. yeah. there's no great master plan or theory to what we do you know it's just just whatever seems like a good idea at the time <laughs> it's a bit <laughs> like us man that's what we do so, yeah. <laughs> yeah we'd love to we'd love to turn it in some big money making thing but we just do it because it makes us laugh and we enjoy it you know it's yeah kind of yeah but that's what it's really it's as much a social thing as anything you know it's the best like, reason to do anything isn't it yeah i think you're right to, to, yeah. to meet fun people and hang out and have a laugh you know so what was the first thing that became colossive? So you thought, like, oh, we need to sort of have this all under one, one umbrella. What, what? How did that come about? Was that both probably, of you at once, or it was probably high precision ghosts? I think. Um, right. I just, you know, needed wasn't planning then to really do a load more stuff, but I just thought, well, we need a a name for this and colossive press, which you know, as you probably know, was colossive was a word my dad used. He had the he, he was Irish and left school when he was about thirteen of over in County Mayo, right in the west of Ireland. So he he didn't have a, a lot of education. So some of his you know, use of language was a bit improvised. So he, he had this word colossive, which meant, you know, a sort of mashup of colossal and massive, I guess, but he, he was convinced that was a word. <laughs> and it is a word now. But it is, it a is word. Yeah. yeah. Thanks yeah. to him. But you know, that just seemed like a funny title for a, a small press. Yeah. Well I love I love that the way that you do do stuff that harks back to your parents. So you've got the Colossive name, but is it um, things my dad saw but never bothered mentioning, which just makes me laugh. That's just a brilliant thing. Is, yeah. is that your dad, Jane, is it? Yes, it is, yeah. So my dad was a very keen photographer, um, and after my mum died, um, dad well, he was in his early 60s, and he retired from his job in a sports shop and he just started going out with his camera more and more, sometimes with his friends. And he'd just go up to London every day um, from where we lived in the suburbs and um, take pictures of things. And what he really got into was um, graffiti and street art. And in the 90s, as that started becoming, there's always been graffiti writers, obviously, but as Banksy started up, yeah. Dad just loved the way that changed all the time, that you could go out every day and see something different. And he went to all these different 
sort of hot graffiti hotspots like skate parks and Hackney Wick and I'd think where the hell is he with his 800 pound camera and be worried <laughs> sick about him but anyway um that hobby saw him right through or that sort of passion saw him right through to um the age of 86 when he died and the last six years of his life he had increasingly bad health he had two separate cancers right and he would d despite anything he would go out and that was what kept him going and in the end he you know this sounds very miserable and indeed it was but he was in a wheelchair he couldn't really talk he couldn't eat or drink he had a feeding tube um he had a catheter he was deaf and you'd think oh you know that's the end of that then but no he had to go out so that's <laughs> what we were doing the last few months of his life taking him out to look at street art so i get to the point <laughs> that's okay no, no, i'm enjoying this that's no, good yeah. inheriting yeah. thousands and thousands of photos tens of thousands wow, yeah okay. i mean thirty-three thousand online of graffiti alone and um, people kept saying you should do a book and well what does that mean do a book you know obviously <laughs> i know what it means but it's just like on one morning there was suddenly a book and then we suddenly thought oh hang on colossive press we'll do it ourselves so i did how graffiti saved my dad's life at least for a while which is a book of his street art and while going through all the graffiti pictures we found so many like I used to speak to my dad every day. I saw him two or three times a week. He only lived down the road. We went out with him at weekends. And I would say, what did you do today, Dad? He'd go, went up London. And that was it. And then when <laughs> we looked through all these photos, there's one in particular, which is Stewie from Family Guy on a um, hire bike being chased by stormtroopers across a snowy park. And Dad never mentioned that. It's like, what, what do you do today? No, no, nothing much. And so we ended up with these two books of things my dad saw but never bothered mentioning, which were exactly that. And there's there's a lot of nudity in it, isn't there? Yeah. He'd just get in places yeah. where so no one ordered? else could. Yeah, the nude bike ride was one of his favourite events. Yeah, naked bike ride straight oh, up there. Yeah. <laughs> and, and you know he he'd be polite, but he would be sticking his camera into people's face. You know he's quite shameless as a photographer. And so where I, you know I go out with my camera, but I'd be really embarrassed to take pictures of people if if I thought there was any chance they'd spot me. And Dad would just shove the camera in their face, um, and their face talking about naked bike riders, mm. but also <laughs> there's like loads of celebrities, politicians, protests. Oh, wow. He got into the front row at Troop in the Colour at Hall Scars Parade by someone said, are you ex-servicer? And he said, yes, but actually he did his national <laughs> service in Nottingham in 1948. But there was, oh, yes, thank you for your service. Come and that sit counts. here. Uh, yeah, yeah, it does, yeah. yeah. Um, and so all those books we did to um, raise money for the hospice that looked after Dad, which is St. Christopher's in Sydenham, near where we live. Oh, great stuff. Oh, that's excellent. Mm. Yeah. That's we brilliant. had I a that's... really good response to it all. And, you know, people love Dad's story and it, it's lovely to sort of do something with his legacy and make something nice out of something that was pretty horrible, really. Yeah, oh, the hospice have used it as well, haven't they? This story as well. Yeah. Yeah. The, um, the, 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 Stewie, the Stewie being chased by stormtroopers... I remember the first time I thought, sorry, I just presumed it was a Photoshop, you know, but it is a genuine thing, isn't it? It's, yeah. it's crazy. And he'll have yeah. just been strolling past, looked up, taken that picture, carried on, thought nothing more of it. And... <laughs> well, he was a little bit more methodical than that. He always seemed to find out when there were going to be press launches and obviously yeah. protests and stuff like that. He did, he did keep an eye out for that sort of thing. Yeah, and it, it yeah. was slightly, you know, it was pre- well, it wasn't pre-internet, but it, it was pre-social media. So he'd he'd find out, in, you know, he'd like read something in the Evening Standard or he'd hear something on the radio and then work out where it was going to be. And Yeah, he was very resourceful like that. Yeah. Oh, man, that's how we all want to be when awesome. we retire, isn't it? Yeah. That's, what, that's yeah. the sort of thing I want to do. Yeah, yeah. yeah. just very go around and bother people. And, <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Plus, the thing is, I'd have is if I stuck... As well. They That's are crackers, yeah, yeah. yeah. 
So the main thing with me, Jane, if I went up to someone and took a photo, asked to take a photograph of me of them, the my the, my main problem would be that they'd want to speak to me afterwards, and that would be something I would wish to avoid <laughs> yeah. quite heavily. But yeah, he, he's obviously got the time in his hand. He didn't care. He probably enjoyed talking to these people. Well, he, he loved. Yeah. You know, he really befriended like. Pro- became proper friends with a lot of the graffiti writers and street artists. Um, to put, you know, there's now a big portrait of him just down the road from our house that yes, one of I the artists that. did. Yeah. Um, but he would also, <laughs> he was, you know, if he didn't want to talk to you, he wouldn't talk to you. So, yeah. you know, he'd take the picture and wander off. And, and, uh, <laughs> a gangster. You know, yeah, <laughs> South London, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. so you know, we, we'd be all like terribly polite yeah. and think, oh, oh excuse me, no. man, doing this. And, yeah, <laughs> that's great. And you've also got this. Um, obviously, a friend, friends of ours have done colossive cartographies with you. Oh yeah, um, Sarah's done one. I think um, Gareth's done one with you. Gareth Hopkins. Has Gareth done Hopkins, one. yeah, did one of the yeah. first one. Yeah, back Tim, Tim Bird. Yeah, yeah. Tim Bird, did you want to yeah. uh, talk Simon a little Russell. bit about? Yeah, of course, Simon. Someone, yeah, show, so, yeah. Is it you've done forty nine now? Is that right? Forty two. We've just had the forty right. second one. We had a bit of a gap because obviously during lockdown people had a lot, you know, a bit of time on their hands, so they were rattling them off then. And then you know, think things have slowed <laughs> down a bit now. But yeah, I mean, forty two is is quite impressive. I've never would have thought Definitely. it'd get that far. Did you want to explain what they are, Tom? Yeah, sure. It's um, it's just like a little one page fold out thing. It's called the Turkish map fold format. So it's like an A four sheet which through magic folds folds down to a6 and it was um i'd sort of got into doing little bits of book binding and jane got me a book with all these various projects in and that was one of them so right. i just made you know a dummy version of it and thought well this would be good for maybe you know if people had one page comics lying around that they didn't really know what to do with just to to pop it in there so contacted a few people i knew you know because at this stage i didn't really know a lot of people in small press comics but you know sean has a party i chatted to a few oh, nice. um yeah. gareth Hopkins, of course, and Olivia Sullivan. I'd sat between at the first oh, yeah. um, Catford mm. zine. Olivia's fair. great. I love Olivia's stuff. Oh, she's yeah, really fantastic. Good. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, so you know, got in touch with a few people, and they started doing them. And then you know, people spied them and wanted to do them, or we just sort of spread the net a bit wider and asked other people. And you know, as it developed, people really started to to use the form. So like all the intricate folds and the the backside of it, you know, people really really make the most of it in very inventive ways so it's all very it's a, a different lovely thing it? to see develop and you know when you get to for the whole body of work like each one is just like a one-page thing but you know some of them are amazing and then the whole body of work put together is is, is fantastic it's yeah they're lovely little things in um sarah's one which is beautiful and it's the mm. first one that um involves a bit of sewing isn't it yeah. as well yes yeah, so she's got a um, tail hanging out of hers isn't but it? it's yeah, only yeah, we yeah. heard her talking to you about it when it had just come out a year or so ago and it just really illustrated that in crowd out crowd thing because she said to you that she almost said no because she thought she wasn't worthy and she wasn't one of the gang and actually Sarah was I think possibly the first person I thought of that we thought we'd really like to do one no and that she'd do something really inventive yeah yeah Yeah. you probably thought of her independently but I remember saying and um you know the fact that there is no in crowd and that like, there's no sort of inner sanctum of people no. and she's yeah. at, I mean there's still people that we haven't approached lots of people that we thought of you know it's just you just sort of ask people when you see them or speak yeah. to them or it just comes up in conversation yeah yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. But see, were you um, were you cursing Sarah when you realised you had to sew a tail into all those ones? <laughs> no, 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 no. I mean, she was she was really apologetic about it, and it's yeah. you know, thirty seconds work for me, you know, and it's it just makes it look fantastic because it just ties in with the, you know, the the um, theme of what she's done. You know, it's about mental health and don't yeah. don't pull the thread. To... Which someone today at the Zoom Fest started pulling it. <laughs> for goodness' sake! Yeah. Oh, well, I think it was going to ping open suddenly to be <laughs> yeah, sort of three yeah. D thing. I get yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, well, I've got a little collection of them, and as you well know, because I buy them from you, but they're lo- they're a lovely little size to have just mm. on the shelf. You know, I've got them on the shelf behind me here. Yeah, lovely man. They really are a great yeah. idea. I mean, I think it's like an inspiration was like Mini Kush, those lovely little A six comics as well. Just to have a yeah. you know a set of those, and each one's got a different voice and a different flavour. Have you got any coming up, any that's over in the works at the moment? We have. We've just got number 43, which we need to sort of go through and edit a bit. 
because there's like right. quite a bit of text in it. But yeah, cool. That, that'll be out in a couple of weeks. Can't well, say. Well, can you say who that's by, or is that still a secret? I think we can. Yeah, it's a it's yeah. an artist called Yolanta Garlic, who's not really a comic. Oh, she is now actually. Yeah. She um, no, okay. We we knew her locally, so sort of independently, she's a, a painter and she a printmaker, and she lived lived in Penge. And we went around to a studio when there was an open studio thing. And this was probably about 10 years ago. Yeah. And in the meantime, she's gone down to Falmouth, I think, to do an MA in illustration. And we just sort of, you know, our paths have crossed again since. And uh, But through LD Comics. Through LD I Comics, think. yeah. We went up there. Oh, uh, right, yeah. To see, look at their sort of awards thing. And they have all the all the entries on display. And there was comic, which is uh, her, her work in progress. I think it's a dad or a grandfather about how he escaped from Poland during the war. He just like walked hundreds of miles through Poland and southern Germany or whatever to, to get to get away. Wow. So done a, a comic about that, which looks great. I mean, it's only a, a fragment so far, but I think she's working on a full-length okay. version of it. Falmouth's a great place, isn't it? I know Sam from No Brow mm. goes down there and speaks there quite a lot. I think it's quite well-known, isn't it? Now? Yeah. Yeah. Good stuff. Um, and then Sorry. something I only noticed today... Um, and I'm, I apologise this because it was in the picture of you on Instagram today, Jane. <laughs> um, and, it, and I know it's just below your face was a picture of a, a zine you got called Vincent, <laughs> which is clearly about our Vince, isn't it? <laughs> yes, it is. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> don't start that. Don't start you know, that. We, we knew we were going to chat to you, so we thought we'd rush <laughs> a zine out about it. No. Yeah, I, 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 truly, I truly appreciate it. It's humbling. It's you humbling. did pitch yeah. it to Mills, didn't you? <laughs> <laughs> to Vince in your cat army. <laughs> oh man, yeah, you weren't there for that, Tom. But we uh, we pressured Vince into pitching a story to Pat Mills called Vince. Oh yeah, I, 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 Vince... I, I, I did not pitch it. <laughs> but well, I don't think kind of, I don't think he really understood. I don't think he kind of understood. No. We're in a restaurant. I think a few beers have been had, and it's sort of yeah. But that we were re- laughing. That reaction we found it funny. will haunt me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely, got a disdain in his just face. Abs- it was just just like, absolute, oh. and not only that, I felt like he looked at me like it was anything to do with me. <laughs> <laughs> and I thought, oh no, well, what can I do now? My my reputation has been ruined, but now it's been saved by this wonderful zine you've made. No, I'm only joking. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so, what's the zine about, Jane? It is about our cat Vince, who was sadly run over and killed last I'm year. Sorry. Um, and we, we've had a series of um, black cat chief of staff here who really run the <laughs> shop, don't they? Like we are Absolutely. just, we are just the steel. interns. So we've currently got Gertie and Gracie, um, who just meeped into the room on cue. But um, <laughs> yeah, when um, Vince died, it was. I mean, this has become my um, sort of go-to thing when something bad happens or, you you know, I I want to, I think, what shall I write about? And Tom's, you know, making stuff up. Oh, not making stuff up. Writing um, about... Flippant flap doodle, yeah. (laughs) No, writing the true history of the Croydon spaceport. Um, But (laughs) I I seem to have all these, you know, I want to write something new and original and... um, you know, really imaginative. And then I write just about uh, the things closest to me. So when Vince died, it was a horrible shock, but we'd had him for a year and a bit. And in that time, he did rule the roost. He was a larger than life character. So I wrote a zine about him and it really helped me with losing him. And then, you know, all my zines end up having a little bit about grief in well, okay. all but one. <laughs> and and that isn't even my intention when I start writing them. But um, it, so it's a lot about a cat and a little bit about grief mm. as well. Do you find the okay. exercise of like writing these sort of zines to be sort of really helpful in, in that kind of way? Yeah, I, d- I mean, with um, the graffiti book, Dad, mm. you know, that was mainly going to be a photo book. And yeah. now actually it's equal words and photos because it really really helped me I mean it's like you know if you write for an audience then you're always worried about what they're thinking but if you write for yourself or or create anything first and foremost then it was worth doing and um, Mm. I find that just writing like getting it down like there isn't a huge audience for a zine about our cat (laughs) Um, 
there's a lot of cat scenes out there but yeah. um yeah. it shouldn't matter though should it yeah. 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 it yeah. just really helped me it was just and it, actually it was like two days after he died that i just couldn't you know i felt so terrible but i can't feel like that you know that mm -hmm. Yeah. In the great scheme of things, it's just your cat died. But actually starting to write about it really, really helped. Okay. And, mm. and then... Brilliant, mate. I mean, right yeah, yeah, I've, done, yeah. I've done the same. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. And it's, it's uh, you know, both of these sort of publications, they're sort of celebrations of life, really, aren't they? That's oh, yeah. Really... Yeah. And that's very much what we want them mm. to be. Yeah. 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 Well, it's, it's interesting you say that because it, it kind of leads on to this philosophy you've got as well, guys, is... Which I, know you... oh, I might be overstating it a bit, but yeah, go on. <laughs> which you, I know you send out this postcard. Um, whenever I buy something, I get I get a postcard from, from you. It's lovely because you actually write, uh, you know. But it's not like you just stick it in a bag and send it to me. There's always a note attached, but it's often on the back of the Colossive Manifesto, um, which you wrote, which we loved. We were passing it between us um, a few months ago, mm -hmm. and one of the first the first thing on it is whatever your story is, it's worth telling, which I think ties into what you're saying there, Jane, as well. Yeah, um, and that's kind of become our byline now. We stuck that on the top of the website because it's <laughs> yeah, that because that just struck a chord with people, you know, like you say. Definitely. So, how did you come up with this whole manifesto? I mean, sh shall I read the next one and we can maybe talk about them all? But be inspired, not intimidated by other people's work. Communicate and collaborate. Find something you love doing and find a way to carry on doing it no matter what. Work with what you have, but never stop learning. Read and listen actively to other people's stories. That's that's sometimes not an easy thing to do um don't overthink it get on with it and finish it which is something we say on this pod all the time yeah. and remember anything's better than a blank page which you know so i mean all so valid and nearly all of those are things we've talked about guys on here over the years haven't we yeah definitely yeah i mean that kind yeah. of ethos of just fucking going for it you can spend you can tie up yourself up yeah. in knots thinking about stuff to do and just get making it that's the yeah. best i mean it all came about because about this time last year we were invited to to give a talk on the LD Comics monthly online. Yeah, we've watched it. It's very good. Yeah, yeah, well, yeah thank really you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Which was absolutely yeah. bloody terrifying at the time. But yeah, you know, <laughs> at, at the end of it, we just thought, well, we, we'll just sort of, you know, you know, we were talking about this sort of thing because it's, it's essentially why we do stuff. And um, so we thought, well, we'll just recap with a few bullet points and jokingly put the Colossus Manifesto at the top of it, thinking, you know, it's a bit overblown but you know we'll we'll say there's, that. there's a history of art movements saying exactly so, things, yeah. isn't there yeah 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 so but then you know people really responded to it. i mean on the night you know all the comments in the chat people were saying how good it was and so we we, we i can't remember now we put it up on the we'll site put, and eventually quickly stick it on a postcard yeah so we've got these postcards <laughs> I mean, like you say tony we bung the move in the nord and we just have them lying around on the table when we're doing fairs and stuff you know and people people will take them and post them and say oh this is so inspiring so it's yeah, you know, that that's, that's very gratifying because to us this is just, you know, well this is why we do stuff, but it's obviously struck a chord with people and. Just, oh, we can't yeah. take our well. We've tried to take our own advice, but we don't always. Ain't that the truth? Yeah, mm. we're the same. Yeah. Well, this is kind of you know being inspired, not intimidated by other people. I mean, that goes back a bit to the, you know, being anxious about meeting people in Gosh on a Friday night because they're. You know these people who do these fantastic comics. And you think, oh god, they don't want to talk to me. You know, and of course they yeah. do. You know, I'd like to point out that I've spoken to Tom and Gosh on a Friday yeah. night, and he yeah. was fine. <laughs> <about talking to laughs> me. Yeah. I don't know how terrified he was before. <laughs> that. Was that was me. I was I was a terrified one. But the um, being inspired and not intimidated by others' work is a great one, I think, as well. And also, I'd add to that is, is don't think it's a competition because it's exactly, not. Exactly. Yeah. 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 And don't just get paralysed thinking, well, because my work's not going to, you know, look like that. You know, your work is going to look like your work, whatever it is mm. you're doing. Yeah. And, you know, that yeah. ties into the stuff, you know, I'd, I'd love to be able to draw comics and, you know, to a to a certain standard, you know, and I can't. And it would wind me up if I tried to do it and would not be satisfying. So I, I have to find other ways of doing it. So whether it's mm. found imagery or collage or, you know, photography and text, you know, you just yeah. find a way that, 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 that works for you. It's a strange ethos that you think that because someone's better at something it would stop you making it because everything you do there's probably someone in the world better at you than doing oh, what yeah. you're yeah, exactly. doing so just make the comic mm. i'm yeah. not necessarily even better but different you know they they're turning their yeah. skills in one direction you've got different skills so use those and do mm. what what you're good at you yeah. know with my yeah I'm, I'm trying to do book artsy stuff because that's what i'm into you know and i can you know work in interesting agree, interesting yeah. print formats and 
I think I think the thing that you you do as well is not only are you both active in making you know art and comics and zines and stuff, but you're also um, nurturing and encouraging others to do it through your imprint, aren't you? Which oh, we're trying to, to yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, do you have a philosophy for you know? Oh, I quite like that bloke. I quite like I quite like that lady's art. I'm not sure about that dude. Do you know? Is this? Do you have a sort of something you're looking for, or is it just something that sparks? Um. I don't know. I mean, you see some something or someone's. I mean, thinking specifically about the cartographies because that's most of what we've worked with other people. Yeah, you just see something like a you know a sense of design or something or an approach to you know the page that you think well that would kind of map onto the the format for the cartographies. And then equally, you just think, oh, that's someone whose work I admire. Mm. And yeah, and no, no, they'll do something. Yeah. Yeah, and, you know, at this point, we should say you are all invited. Yeah. To do oh, yeah, there's an open invite. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's very kind. The, um, and um, we'll sign the, the contracts later for that one. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yes, it's a really, yeah. really long contract. Yeah. A legal team of absolutely <laughs> yeah. murderous when it comes yeah. to that. I do love the fact that you've got an artist who's called, now is this right, they're called Bungalow World. Yes. yes. That's yeah. the name of the artist, is it? Yeah. That's great. Well, That's well <laughs> that is... The name of their, um, what would you call it? That's that's the name they go by. Yes, possibly not um, in pseudonym. everyday is it a life. Is it yeah. Yes, yeah, it's like a superhero a, name. Yeah, yeah. 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 That's a, if you're going to choose one, that's a good one. Yeah, but she's a professional <laughs> illustrator, and she just yeah, yeah. yeah. So Jane said, goes by Bungalow World. Well, she's brilliant. Um, she she did this fantastic tea towel that says what well, one day you will own a dishwasher which um <laughs> you know of one day i will own that tea towel but yeah her cartography was just it, it's just su such a simple idea but it's really brilliant and it connects with people which is um it's called antidepressants and then it's just it, it's pictured like nice drawings of um, stationery, but then renamed uh, as kind of antidepressants, like showing art as therapy. I can't remember what that. No, like... I've got a couple in front of me. So you've got s stapler raisin. Yeah. Yes. Which is a kind of a joining of a stapler and an antidepressant. You've got glubropropion, which is a glue pot. Yeah, it's it's fucking genius. I loved it. Yeah, I've say wasn't Joan Collins' husband called Bungalow Bob or something? Do you remember him? Oh yeah, Bungalow Bob. Because oh, you've had not a lot upstairs <laughs> and quite a lot. And I believe the phrase is quite a lot downstairs. I believe was how that went. Yeah, yeah. Excuse my French, but yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> anyway, was, Bungalow Vince. Can I can tell the, Danny uh, Dyer story. Oh, please do. Hopefully. Yeah, oh, please God. do. Danny Dyer was on. Uh, Have I got news for you? And a news story came, I can't remember the item, but it was called Bungle Chow Chow. And he said, Bungle Chow Chow, that sounds like something when my uh, Chinese gets my order wrong. And it sort of cut to Ian Hislop, like looking at him, but he just burst into laughter. <laughs> <laughs> Bungle Chow Chow. <laughs> my God. Anyway, back to the action. Danny, yeah. yeah that, was, that was the Dan Butcher, Danny Dyer. The moment. weekly Danny Dyer. Yeah. <laughs> Danny Dyer is slowly turning into um, Britain's version of Stephen Seagal, isn't he? I think he's just been ridic <laughs> ridiculous. Yeah, the, uh, yeah. He'll do a oh, film I'm where he totally doesn't get out of a chair. Change. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm up for that. Um, and then the other thing recently we wanted. To, I mean, there's many things we want to talk to you guys about. But then one of the things was the series that we. I absolutely loved it, guys. Was Fractures mm. by the amazingly named Wolfgang Crow, who you told me goes by the name Wolf. <laughs> he does. Um, yeah, not the one that Sarah knows. Um, so, do you want to talk a little bit about that? Because that's quite an impactful book, isn't it? How did that come? Uh, it is very well. You just got in touch with us. I mean, quite often we get emails from people who I think think we're you know a bit more of a professional operation than got a big are. office You're... in the city yeah, yeah we well same. people yeah, ask yeah. us if you know we need interns or work experience people and stuff like that but um <laughs> yeah we'll go in touch and sort of describe the project and send me a link to it he's he'd originally done a version of it i think for his his ma his illustration ma and he ran to like hundreds of pages and he said oh, okay. you know, i, I want to try and you know reshape this and would you sort of be interested in in working with me on it so, you know, we looked at it and obviously it was, I mean, it, it's got better, but, you know, even at that stage, it was obviously really important work. I mean, I, listeners might not know the story. Um, in 2015, Wolf was the victim of a homophobic attack. And, you know, the the story is how he recovered from that. So, well, you know. Yeah. So the story being he was working. The aftermaths of negative and then eventually the, how, he, how he survived and got over it. 
Yeah. So I, I do it's because he's working in his dad's shop, doesn't he? And this sort of yeah, dude like who was sort of notorious. Works, yeah. Yeah. And this this thing... notorious meathead of a dude comes in and has a go at him. Huh. And the story when when I I heard what it was about and I bought it from you, I thought, oh, maybe you know he gets attacked and he has to recover. But the 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 rather I don't know whether it's gratifying or not, but I was I was cheering for him when he has a go back at the dude. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean, he proper puts up a fight, doesn't he, with this massive dude? Mm. I thought, oh, good on you, mate. You know. Um, yeah. But he, he suffers terribly from it. He, you know, he's, he's quite badly injured from it and sort of mentally scarred, isn't it? And it, yeah. it bookends it with him seeing the psychologist at the start, yeah. doesn't it? Yeah. yeah. And then, I mean, you know, it, it's not really a spoiler, but the, the way the story develops is, you know, he subsequently became sort of obsessed with, oh, God, I should have been fitter. I should have been stronger. I should have oh, you know, okay, dealt okay. with it. Right. So he, he becomes like an obsessive sort of gym bunny and he has an eating disorder and, you know, his friends try and pull him back but he, he won't have it and so his relationships with his friends suffer so that's right. kind of where the you know the meat of the story goes until he, he deals with all that but yeah and so he's, he, he's, he, he's so sort of he, suffers ptsd doesn't he i'm guessing oh absolutely yeah yeah okay. so he was um okay, no. so you know so he sent us his send me the stuff and i had a look at it and it obviously was really important stuff and i you know at that point I'm thinking oh yeah you know it, it's nice what we're doing but i'd like to sort of maybe expand a bit more and start publishing other people. So it landed just at the time I was thinking that. Right. So, you know, so I got to him. I said, well, you know, it, yeah, we'd love to love to do something with you, but, you know, it is just the two of us doing this round our daytime job. So if, you know, if you're happy to work in that kind of space, then, yeah, we'd love to work with you. And he was, you know, and then we had a really productive process of, yeah, editorially sort of condensing the work and thinking how it might, you know, break down into – into pieces you know so now we've got it down to we think a four-part series of probably 48 pages each and yeah. you know working working on that first issue and coming up with the you know the, the point at which it breaks off you know it was really really rewarding it was really really great to work with as well because he was very positive about you know, it's take... like a cliffhanger isn't it it's like watching yeah. the end of a yellowstone episode or something it's something yeah, happens it's not really what you expect it is a yeah you know, a shocking development. But then, you know, after he'd done that and he started reworking the pages, every time I saw the pages, he just, he's a very strong sort of visual storyteller and finding, using the comics form, you know, it's not just like a storyboard for a film sort of thing. You know, he really, yeah. really uses the, the page to get inside his characters and express how they're feeling. And he uses imagery and stuff. And there's that, brilliant scene which is raining those cups down on him yeah i mean that's that so thing, beautiful just, man yeah where he's talking to the the psychiatrist in the water sort of gradually filling up the frames as well i mean he's, he's brilliant he really is so inventive at stuff like that he's just a natural comic story to, well not naturally he probably works very hard at it but you know he's got a real gift for yeah. finding those visual metaphors and using the comics page to to i think that's that i think what you're, you're talking about there it shows the beauty and i know it's something that um, he's talked to a lot about no, at no brow, but finding something and then doing your job as an editor, but also knowing that, you know, helping sort of coax an artist through it, you know, and discuss mm. it and collaborate as an editor, I suppose. Yeah. I mean, I was doing, I was making contributions, but like I said, yeah. he, every time the, the pages came back, he was adding more and more stuff that, you know, took me aback. I wasn't expecting it to go in that direction yeah. graphically. You know, it was just, it was just great to see and great to be a part of. But that, that conversation, I think, with an editor can sometimes inspire different angles and different things. And well, you know, if you're so, just yeah. stuck, I mean, stuck in a room on your own, it's, you know, it's sometimes yeah. going to be hard work, isn't it? You know, but And just the amount of material there was, you know, like I said, there were hundreds of pages. So, you know, I, I, I tried to find the, you know, the quickest route made to be sort of yeah. thing. Yeah. yeah. And what was essential, you know, as someone, because obviously he's lived through all this. So he kind of, you know, finds it difficult to yeah. step back and, yeah, yeah, definitely. Put make it put it in in a shape, you know, a, yeah. a narrative sort of shape. I mean, so, do you yeah, think, so I really enjoyed that. Throwing that open to the guys, do you think that's something that's missing with editors these days? I mean, we often talk about it, don't we? About the, what the role of an editor? I mean, have yeah. you been involved in anything where there's an editor and they've taken control of it a little bit more than? Uh, no, I can't say myself. I've been involved in a project where editors kind of like really taking the reins, as it were. I've had great constructive feedback and advice and sort of pushing in a certain direction hmm. right uh, not so much where they've just completely I think taken I, it i mean. think constructive is the important word isn't it dan it's that sort of um like an editor is, is a very important part of the process 
Um, and just as we say, like collaboration and communication is, is, is the most important part of like any project. Um, the way an editor interacts with a creator as well has to be hugely constructive and like I mean I think probably that's maybe when it comes to some bigger companies um, yeah. where where some creators get a bit browbeaten because they, they I don't know just put put their script to one of the big publishers and they turn back and go no 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 you've got to do this this and this very yeah. dismissive but I think in the sort of more independent community there's more of a it's a it's a it's a dance, isn't it? It's, it's, it? You're in it together rather than working for someone. So the editor is trying to help help that project. Yeah, you want it to be the best it can be. So it's going to a lot yeah. of times sell or be interesting or yeah. be great yeah. more. Yeah, I think I think there's that that what you're talking about there, V, about being browbeaten by an editor. I think that certainly happens. But I think also we see the the other end of it as well, where you've got someone who's a massive name. Yeah. And how many times have we? I said it recently with a, an Alan Moore book I read, uh, and I felt like saying, could have done with an editor putting their foot down here. I've got to be yes. honest with you. You know, I yeah. think that happens as well. But I think in the small press community as well, people will get a project and they'll write their name down as editor and all they've done really is, you know, spell-checked it here and there. Mm. And I think to, to be part of it almost from the commencement and say, well, I see what you're doing here, but don't you think we need something more interesting in the middle? This is a slow bit here. What yeah. do you think about that? You know, I think there's a lot of that to be, you know, crafted by two people because it's the, it's the wood for the trees a lot of the time when you're a creator, aren't you? When you can, when you're just looking at that page, you're missing the bigger pictures. Sometimes. I pretty think you're going to mention this, but like Madeline, but like yeah. my article, I got editorial feedback from both yourself and Simon, and All right, I okay. changed it quite not drastically, but it needed more to it. So. I took it away, reworked it, and I think we got the best out of it. So yeah, I, I loved it, man. I just thought there was one bit of it I just thought was the more interesting of the the main, you know. And I thought oh, I would love yeah. to hear a bit more about that bit. It was almost yeah. So we pulled that bit out and made that more interesting. And... Yeah, it was good, man. Really oh, good. Thank you. More yeah, about yeah, that later on. Perhaps. Seen that? Yeah, we're really we're really interested there. Simon's done a great job on it. Yeah, it goes live on Kickstarter on Wednesday. I'll mention okay. it again in a minute, but uh, yeah, very good. But just going back to editing, yeah, I mean, I mm. guess. A when you're in the small press, you have that amount of freedom that you're just doing it for your, yourselves, essentially, I guess, you know, in yeah. the in industrial publishing, you know, the editors also got someone breathing down their neck to get this book out the door and, yeah. you know, have it to a certain, well, it's this big row at the moment, certain house not... style or whatever, you know? Yeah. I'm, well, I, I say row it's, that's ridiculous because it's the internet. So it's, there's this, you know, um, a fight in a teacup going on at the moment where they're saying that, um, some of the DC writers are getting paid less because more money is going to the the main writer on an event. Have you seen this that's talked about recently? No. No. Yes, yeah, yeah, it's not great. So what they're saying is um, regular. So you'll have the the you know, for example, Mark Wade has denied that he's this is happening to him instantly. But if I use him as an example, Mark Wade is running is it Lazarus Planet at the moment? So he yeah. would allegedly he claims this isn't true would be getting more money than a writer who's doing Lazarus Planet Wonder Woman, for example. Um, and because he's the showrunner, essentially, of that book, so he's the one who's coordinating all the story beats. And the argument being that, isn't that what editors are meant to do? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, mm. which is a funny thing, isn't it? But I think the thing is with editors at, the, you know, bigger comic companies like Marvel and DC is they've, they're they just like, they're just spinning plates all the time, aren't they? Mm. Just they just got deadlines written across their desk trying to get stuff yeah. out the door and stuff, you know. Um, yeah, I think the role of the editor is... is more important than people think these days, I think, and and it should be handled differently. I think what you're doing there is perfect. Yeah, Tom. You know that's how I see yeah. it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I always give the example of In Waves. When In Waves from No Brow came in, Sam, it was just about the history of surfing, and Sam took AJ away for a bit of dinner and said, "Look, what you know, what else can we include there?" And he told this story about his girlfriend. And he said, "Well, that's that's a big part of it, then. That needs to be part of it, mm. and that's almost like the main part of it to me." You know? Yeah, I mean, I've, I've got no idea really. <laughs> yeah, yeah beautiful book as well yeah yeah interesting cool so what have you got coming up I know, so, so let's cover um conventions because you did one today didn't you we did yeah we did the super wedge zine fair in um hankney wick which such was, a hipster, know, tom absolutely that's all. <laughs> there were there were some notable outfits though weren't there, there were. <laughs> was it, are we are we hitting um are we hitting hipster or cosplay moments these days? Sometimes, oh, more hipster than cosplay, I guess. <laughs> yeah, I went to um, Elcaf. God, the first year we did this podcast, do you remember? And there was someone dressed as a scout there. Do you remember? <laughs> a scout? 
Yeah, like an old school 1940s. Oh, okay. You well, know. it wasn't just the scout. <laughs> yeah, and it, I think it, no, I don't think it was. I think he was much older and had quite a heavy beard, you know, like a and uh, and I thought I kept looking at him, thinking, is this some comic I don't know of, some manga, or something? <laughs> is this the sort of hipster cosplay? I don't know, but yeah, yeah. Was it good though? Was it a good event? It was, yeah. I mean, like I said, it got a. It was quite slow at the start because it was in essentially a bar at eleven o'clock on a Sunday morning. But then, you know, as people started drifting in. You know, there's a bit of passing trade, I guess, who were just people coming in for their whatever lunch and drinks and stuff. But they said there are a few people who'd made a, a trek there, especially, weren't there? Yeah, it was just a really nice atmosphere. And people were very interested in what we were doing, and you know, right, like, all, all the table as well. It sounds doing. like a cop out because you'd like if you haven't sold anything, start thinking, but I've had some really nice conversations. But like, we genuinely had, like, it took, oh, it was over an hour before we sold anything, well, or, yeah. but like, hardly anyone came in but then you're just meeting other people and chatting and getting ideas and then it's worth it for that yeah. and then then some people did come in and we did sell stuff but yeah it's just it's just nice to be among like-minded people yeah you creative. do feel like you're part of something even yeah, though yeah. Yeah, everyone's doing like very divergent stuff i mean our stuff's really eclectic but you know there are people doing their sort of personal kind of mental health zines and other photography zines but you know it's all all people, you know, are just just doing their stuff. You know, they. I was, I was surprised it's... to hear that this was the first last year was the first time you did Thought Bubble. I'd have thought you'd have been a, a fixture there, guys. Yeah. Right? Well, the thing is, the timing it always kinds of clashes with Jane's birthday. We normally try to go away then because it's November's a bit miserable. But... but also, it goes back to this in crowd thing. Like <laughs> last year, when <laughs> they said, um, you know, when applications were open, I said, "Oh, we'll apply for that." Tom said, "But there's no way we won't get in that." <laughs> and, and then, only because a lot of our stuff is, is like we say comics adjacent you know we don't have a stack of comics really but there's a lot of that going on there man we thought that we well, thought yeah, that for years I mean, but yeah there is a lot that when we got there, yeah 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 dan likes to buy like prints and posters and stuff don't you dan yeah as you well know okay <laughs> Usually with inspirational quotes. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and what have you? And what have you got coming up, guys? You got any other um, conventions coming up, or you booked any? Do you do the legs and all that sort of thing as well? Well, we've applied for the legs this year for the first time, so we'll see. See how we get on with that, and we're yeah. going to apply for Thought Bubble again. If we get in both, I'm not sure we'll do both, but we'll see. Yeah, I get you. Mm. It's a big shout on it. That it's yeah. quite a big cost, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. the legs isn't cheap. I think to get up no. and back. I mean, last so, year Thought Bubble. We, cost us a fortune really but you know it was just yeah. more the social you know we just wrote it off as a kind of social that's, that's, that's how, we've, away, that's how we've looked at it yeah that's all yeah and it was great time. just to see people and you know the, the saturday night social bit in the majestic was was great it was really enjoyable cool. but closer to home we've got the south london comic and zine fair oh yeah um, we're going to talk is about it the this down, 16th of july yeah which last year it was, it was so brilliant um and um, Hannah, Becky, and Pete work so hard to organise it. And um, yeah, bec because we are a publisher, we we know we've got a table. Yeah. And then applications are open at the moment to individual creators. But that right. is literally ten minutes down the road for us. So that that's <laughs> that's South Nord, isn't it? That's yeah, yes. in the Stanley Arts, which is which is a lovely venue. They've done it up quite a bit lately, and there's studios there in a nice bar and stuff so it's a very pleasant place to hang out for a nice sunny day so it's this year it's the first time it's open to applications was it invite only previous to that is that right yes but yeah last year well, it, was... it was trying to keep it because it was south london um it was mainly south london creators and yeah. i think it was invitation only wasn't it, it? last year it was yeah yeah but... yeah because I think the South London has changed so much, guys, isn't it? Well, I was living in there in the early 80s, and it was like, cool, it's rough. But now it's quite cool to live down there, isn't it? You must have seen it change. Oh, it's always been cool. <laughs> <laughs> People just didn't realise. Maybe, um, yeah. 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 Now, there's definitely been like wave of gentrification that sort of spread through East Dulwich and Broccoli and... Yeah, yeah. this is... Well, Penn's pushing yeah. back against yeah. gentrification. It's not... <laughs> uh, gentrification is quite negative isn't it but it's just it's like you know 
you speak to people at zine fairs as well speaking to someone today and say oh you know where i live there's nobody but if you do something put it out there it turns out there's loads of people that are interested yeah. and are also creative and you know it's just it's people sort of sticking their head above the parapet you're right you're right i mean I, if you build I, it I they met, will come yeah i mean i met adam Falp <laughs> at edinburgh comic-con and it turns out we live two miles from each other mm. you yeah. know so, yeah, there are definitely wild people around you. You just don't know about it. I suppose because the nature of us all is we're slightly introverted, aren't we? And we just sit yeah. at our desk yeah. and don't really talk to anyone. But, yeah, if it, once these these things have started and the internet sort of blossomed it, didn't it, I suppose, for a while. Um, yeah, definitely. So that's – and what about publication-wise? What have you got coming out, say? Well, we've got the new – this um, Cost of Cartography number 43, which will be out in – a couple of weeks i guess two yeah, or three two weeks or three i reckon weeks. yeah so you sell the, them that'll be the start in... of series eight which is oh, quite incredible oh, yeah because yeah, you send them in back you sell them in batches and do you sell them as individuals as well oh yeah individually but yeah but they're, i mean they're still two quid each which, which is <laughs> yeah. ridiculous or a tenner for the the series of six real good yeah which, yeah so oh, if people subscribe to a series yeah. they get it you know, as we publish them. Which oh, you've the got like a subscription one, model. That's oh, nice yeah, one. Yeah, yeah. the biggest gap, wasn't it? Because I yeah. think there was about seven or eight months between. Yeah. Our subscribers were very patient. We didn't get yeah. any complaints. <laughs> <laughs> That's a great idea. Yeah. Of course, are you going to do a big thing for number 50 or is that, you know? Oh, well, I, kind of. Well, I don't know. That's I been mean, discussed not, clearly. Not I heard plan, in your voice. I mean, yeah. 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 That, that would that would be a nice, a nice to uh, thing to commemorate certainly but we'll yeah, so see. you've got john byrne lined up for issue 50 <laughs> 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 yeah. no that's great that's, guys really good it's been and, long yeah i mean things. fractures two i guess will be the next big thing but i mean that's 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 a long way down the line yeah that'll be like in low like in summer probably okay it's not that far away no, no. Yeah. 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 i mean actually it, once know. wolf gets going he, he does rattle off pages pretty quickly he gets really into it so yeah, I must get Wolf on for the issue two coming out. That'd be lovely. But that'd yeah, be a, like a blink and we'll be summer again. Yeah. I know. Yeah. Yeah. So where can people go to uh, find out more about your books and what's coming up, etc.? Well, our website is Colossive.com, one L and two S's. Um, on social media, we're on uh, the Twitter and the Instagram as at Colossive Press. For what it's worth, we're on Facebook we are, as yeah. well. But <laughs> at Colossive Press as well. Um, yeah. That's also for social media, really, isn't no, it? No yes. OnlyFans or anything like that? No. No, not yet, no. <laughs> not yet. It's, not yet. Yeah, thinking about it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. No, that's on the to-do list. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're trying to update our blog on the site a little bit more often, so that might be worth having a look at. We're trying to include sort of small press information or fairs and stuff like that we, we picked up on. So. Well, we're going to yeah. have to do it now. Yeah. <laughs> <said> that. <laughs> <laughs> well, that was something we'd really neglected. We hadn't updated that for god knows how long so mm. yeah time to be applied to food, yeah <laughs> yeah well go forth and check them out people and uh you won't you won't turn what well, you won't look back so no uh, i think they're great i love yeah. stuff from you guys and it always comes I'm really plunging. quickly as well yeah, yeah. i want to be yeah. going to that uh south london one because there's are going to go in uh, d aren't we Within it's in my old school oh wow okay i used to go to stanley tech is now Harris CTC or something. So yeah, that's uh, where Captain Sensible went, isn't it? Yeah, it is. Yeah, well, oh, wow. well yeah, he's song Croydon. He mentions it. Yeah. Have you seen the Sensible Garden? No. Sensible Garden, the, no. There's a community garden on that, like a bit of old grass, opposite the school, and he came and opened it. Oh, okay. <laughs> and now it. I mean, it's. Uh, it, it's been left to rewild a bit now, hasn't oh, it? Yeah. oh, it's still all right. It's a couple of benches and, you know, yeah. it's, it, improvement on what it was. So was that on South Nord Hill or, or around? No, just um, on the on the high street, sort of opposite the the school. So I'm heading towards the, the Goat House Bridge. Oh, yeah, okay. It's There's fascinating that. listening for yeah. people who don't yeah. <laughs> There's those two advertising. Yeah. There's those two advertising billboards, is it, in that little yeah. rubble in there? Yeah. And this, just is the railway line, yeah. and this is a fascinating... It's like listening to a conversation <laughs> between London. someone and my com. dad. Right. Yeah. Um, and press the red button and you can yeah, get plenty yeah. more of this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I look forward to checking out that Captain Sensible's garden. Yeah, it's, not the, it's not the first time Dan said that. Uh, thanks very much, guys. Well, really thank you for having us. It's been a treat. Well, there you go, folks. Wasn't that wasn't that great? 
and inspiring. Lovely stuff. Yeah, definitely check out their website. Yeah, really good. Some lovely stuff there. Um, yeah, and I need to. And there's an open invite to you two guys to do one. I'm quite into that. Yeah, good cartography. I'd like to see something you do. I was looking at. I do you know what? I love that the way that it's all folded and stuff. I, I was. Looking yeah, at they're something. lovely things to have. Yeah, really. yeah. I'm, I'm currently yeah. in a sort of um, creative mindset of trying to decide what to do next, where where to go next. So, okay. You know. And I, I, you know, flex your I, muscles on that. I did a sex tape. Uh, oh, um, I've got to be careful. Where I flex my muscles down. Yeah. You know um, <laughs> but yeah, I was doing. You, you know, you get your your um, office studio slash whatever it is. You know that general tidy up of your sort of work area. And um, I'm talking about like actual studio, not like manscaping. Anyway. Um, <laughs> But, um, but yeah, and I was so sort of rooting through. You know when you find old papers and old sketches and old notes, and you're thinking, Fuck yeah, it. and you you end up wasting half the time looking through it, thinking, bloody hell, how naive I was, or or maybe finding an idea that was actually quite good. And I just found a stack of like pads and paper and like pens and stuff, and I thought, and I had this itch, and like some some old sort of illustrations I did. And I thought, oh, I've, I know I've got like the iPad, but I just. I need the ink and paper. I need to get some ink yeah. and paper in my life. Yeah, your stuff seems a... to lend itself to that, Vince. Your yeah. style. Yeah. You didn't um, mention that that um, June book I put on the uh, WhatsApp the other day. Man, it so reminded me of your work. Oh you know, yeah, that I, very flattering. Ho- because that was, yeah, that was professional. Really, yeah. I looked at it. I thought, what? fucking hell, Vince could be drawing this. Who put that out? Uh, it's a June book by Boom. I think. Oh, Boom. Yeah. Yeah, boom, yeah, boom yeah. in June. I've got a boom one to talk about in a minute, actually. Nice, mm. nice. Uh, speaking of talking about some comics, we have some shout outs for you, lovely people, and a new segment. Oh, yes, oh, yeah, we yes, have, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. But before that, what, what shout outs have we got, gents? Shall I do mine, Dan? Because you can sure. do your, your, new, your new thing as well. So I've got two Tony, the comics t shirts. Now, I don't know if any of everyone knows this, but Falpy never tires of trolling me, so <laughs> he has produced a t shirt with my face on. Um, which he's now put for sale, but because it will make me feel better, um, five pounds of the sale of each T-shirt goes to mind. So if you want a T-shirt with my stupid mug on it, um, go to tributepress.co.uk and and a part of that will go to mind. And we're making virtually nothing out of it. Um, also, coming out this week on Wednesday is the Kickstarter for Madeline. Um, I think you're not in it, V, are you? I can't remember. No, no, I'm not. No, just me and Dan. And, and and a host of other people are coming out. So it's, it's a project that uh, Simon Russell, our buddy, has put together. And it is a book of um, memories that come from comics. Uh, it's a really lovely idea that started as a zine, but loads of people got their skins for in it, for fuck's sake. Wow, There's nice. some real yeah. cracking people. Paul Rainey, uh, Eamon, loads of people off the, off the slack um, are in it. And so it's now he's kickstarting it because it's going to have to be perfect bound because it's there's too many pages to staple if you see what I mean. <laughs> um, so he's, he's kickstarting it. Kickstarter does not allow you to raise money for charity, but I can tell you that the money is just being used to post it out and print it, and that is it. Any other money will likely find its way to an Alzheimer's charity. Put it that nice. way, um, which is is in keeping with it. Um, if you listen, if you so it comes out Wednesday, it lands on Kickstarter Wednesday morning. If you want to know a little bit more about it, I did an interview with Simon that's out on the NIA uh, feed at, at the same time as the Kickstarter lands. So have a listen to that, me, him, and Eamon. So I had to talk through, it and it's lovely. We just talked about things that remind you of things. You know, we can almost chart our lives through what comics are coming out sometimes, can't we? Mm, yeah. You know, like I remember where or what comic I read on holiday, but I don't remember loads about that holiday, nah, you know, for example. Yeah. And stuff like that. So look out for that. It's called Madeline. And you'll also find out why it's called that. It's a really interesting story. There you go. There nice. Man. Dan. Yes, me. So first off, we've got uh, an event, Lawless Comic Con. Uh, yeah. Just around the comic com, corner, comic. What the fuck am I corner. talking about? <laughs> uh, <laughs> it's the 27th and 28th of May, 2023, at the Double Tree by Halton Hotel, Bristol. Uh, so go check that one. Absolutely, I wrote off, read off the guest list last time, and it's fucking massive. So yeah, uh, go check that. Go to lawlesscomiccon.co.uk, and you can go check it that out. See what's going on there. We've got a Kickstarter coming up by James Blundell. Predators, a one pound twelve page comic short. When a man is rejected by a woman at a club, brings out his dark side. However, has he bitten off more than he can chew? So that's going to be launching soon. You can sign up. Well, I mostly just used to go home and crank. After <laughs> 
Uh, you got just enough time. We've got another 10 days when you hit to this to uh, Bullet Adventures. Issue 1 to 3, the Speedy Superhero Series continues. Uh, that's smashed through its goal. So back that one, check that one out. We've got uh, The Gentleman Ghouls, another nine days to go on that. That's absolutely Blit Raiders target by Fun oh, Show, Alfie Gallagher, uh, the, the Apocalypse Trilogy, uh, which is ready to rock and roll. And f- lastly, but not leastly, it's the, uh, no, one more thing. We've got the Spawn Hub reading group going oh, on yeah. in, in the Slack. And this week we're, from today till next Sunday, we'll, we'll work on an issues five to 10, which is the interesting part of the run, which I can really sticks out in my mind is when they had Alan Moore, Neil Gaiman, uh, Dave Sim as well. Dave Sim. I've yeah. just read the Alan Moore ones and essentially he sets up the entire spawn, potentially sets up the entire spawn megaverse, all the worlds, like these, all these levels of hell and stuff. All so right. much ideas packed in there. And essentially Todd uh, McFarlane just gives out the two fingers and then goes off and does something completely different. <laughs> it's like, look, mate, he's built the entire skeleton for what you can do here. There's so many stories you can do with this. And you just fuck it all off and just meander f- from what I remember. Well, this is what part <laughs> of this reading group's about, going back over it. But That's a great idea, man. I think we should have more of them. I think that's a, a superb idea. Yeah, It's a good way because like, in, in the we've got a Slack channel for it and people – put stuff in there and notice stuff and there was stuff that i didn't notice like one of the news stories in one of issue one like they had al simmons who's that who becomes hellspawn i was voted as one of the best looking men in the world or something and it's like isn't he like a secret agent why would he be why would that be on the news <laughs> it's it's a real kind of misstep from the right in front but it's what, kinda, what they were smoking back at those early yeah, days of who knows, everything yeah. everything we yeah. life where a conan sword didn't he he's earning so much money <laughs> yeah. he, well, he funny- got caught Oh, mate, sorry. He got caught up in a bit of controversy about how much he paid for Stephen Platt's artwork this week. Right. Have you saw uh, any of that? No, I didn't see that. Yeah. No. He, he, it's not like him to be like, caught up in a bit of no, Yeah, what? Yeah. What Rob Liefeld. Funny enough, um, this week um I sent through so do you remember we had the competition for the book we just talked about with yes. Tom and Jane for Fractures? And I sent it the, the person who got the question first was um uh, Gary Sorry, it was Gareth Hopkins. So I sent Gareth the book through, but I included, I have a spare trade. You know, if you ever saw these comic creator trading cards, have you ever seen them? No. And they're all like, oh, this is a picture of Paul Kupperberg, and it's like a nice picture of him smiling, you know, signing at a convention or something like that. Or this is a picture of George Perez, you know, just, you know, head and shoulders picture. Hmm. The only one that's different from that is Todd with his shirt off and a baseball bat. <laughs> and I put it in I put it in the package to Gareth. He went, Oh, I got the book through, thanks a lot. Oh, and I got that trading card as well. <laughs> remember those little intros he used to do before the spawn cartoon? Oh, I love that? that. Yeah, yeah, I love that. He was so nice it was nice to me when I met him. He was all right. Yeah, he seems all right. Funny no. as fuck. Yeah. yeah, yeah, really funny. And and last but not least, uh new segment of the show, ACB yeah. boss of the week, which we yeah. give a shout out to someone who thinks this gone above and beyond. And this week is for Matt Strott. Cool. Uh, he started up a new work regime where he's getting up at 5 a.m., which is a silly time to get up to do comics. But that's the time he's got, and he's making time to make comics. Uh, and so There's some just, great stuff coming out. What's yeah. character design stuff at the moment, isn't it? Lovely stuff. You can check out his stuff on Twitter, at Messy Comics, M-E-S-Y-C-O-M-I-C-S. And well done, Matt. That's like taking inspiration for that, getting up, doing the work, and finding the time. There's always time in the day you can – find to do what you want to do yeah and he's on the spawn hub as well isn't he he is on spawn hub he's one of the main reasons we started the spawn thing because i talked about it briefly on the show and he he kind of fired up an idea and then yeah. before we got it we got spawn hub on the go i'm hopefully having dinner with him at um baltimore oh September. fantastic nice. be awesome. yeah, i'm really looking forward to it me him and uh mr cumber that's gonna be a chuckle isn't it that yeah, yeah that'd be that'd be lively <laughs> so yeah get get uh go follow matt go check out his work and uh jump on the spawn hub where we will firing back and stuff back and forth about spawn so this week this week's issue is going to be five to ten cool nice work man mm. nice Good. and speaking of nice i think it's time to recommend some comics mm. lovely people so so i've uh, got one we've all read should we start on that one guys yeah That's good that one. Yeah. Yeah, yeah 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 so the first one is we kindly got sent through from zoop um thanks guys um so it's called The Butterfly House. It's um, colour cover, black and white interiors, 26 pages, mm. written by Paul Allor. Last time, I was trying to figure out last time we spoke about Paul, and I think it's when he did that Tet book about Vietnam. Ah, okay. Yeah. It's like year one of the pod. Really good. And then I wow. think I met him at New York after that. He was doing a sign in there. 
um really good writer art by juan romero edited by claire napier who i'm social media friends with mm. um i think um she did some of the alpha pod flight didn't she i think with gareth back in yeah. the day oh nice one okay yeah um it's currently on zoop crowdfunding if you listen to this on the day of release um, which will be the 13th of February, 2023. It'll have nine days to go. Could do with a little push over the edge. Um, it's um, it's, a, it's a hair away from being funded, I think, to be fair. Published by a company called Pink Midnight. This was sent, as I say, th- sent to us by Jordan at Zoop. Thank you, Jordan. Um, I lo- the cover, it reminded me, I don't know what you guys think, it reminded me the cover of a re-release of an iconic sci-fi book or yeah, something like you. that, mm. yeah, yeah, yeah. where it's got that sort of, representative cover yeah um which isn't necessarily what you find inside but is very iconic and eye-catching yeah is that a fair assessment guy yeah I, I i think a cover like this for the story we don't want to do spoilers but for the story this kind of cover is, is kind of what you're going to go for because yeah it gives a hint doesn't it but yeah, you don't literally do what it's in the book it's mm. yeah 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 I'm going to say, from my own personal taste, I found it a little too clean for what was inside. Okay. But I see the from a sales point of view and a noticing it on a shelf point of view, and we'll be, I'll be talking about this in my other recommend, this was by far a great idea to have on a shelf because it's it's something people will spot from Pops a off. distance. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, the interiors are wordless and they follow what's referred to widely as dream logic. Um, I don't like. I don't mind that as a style. I actually quite like that thing. Although there's nothing more boring than someone telling you about their dreams, but I don't know why. But I find it more interesting in a comic. If it makes sense, um, or in a movie. It's or visualized, isn't it? Like yeah. there's a visual representation. Yeah. Someone's saying, oh, "I dreamt about Ian and Cadbury's cream egg." It's much more interesting to see artwork of that, I guess. <laughs> yeah. <I don't> know. <laughs> kind of start going with that, and then oh, there's, there's, there's the, the yeah. fan art challenge of the week. Yeah. <laughs> Coming after Vanguard, I'd, the cream one, egg challenge. Yeah, one notice. Do you think is this post-apocalyptic? Well, I wondered that. I was going to give a quick summary of what maybe. Okay. Yeah. So a man appears. He's walking. He's out hiking. I would say, um, and he notices one of those sort of glass-roofed kind of buildings, the sort of building you would find. Funny enough, we just talked about Crystal Palace, but this is the kind of building you would find in Crystal Palace or something yeah. like that, or you know that sort of thing. Um, and it's like one of those old-school butterfly houses. And he walks in, and it, there's nobody about, and he's wandering around. And although it's black and white, you get a sense that there's a, there's a lushness and a greenness to the in, inside of this um, this this house. And there's butterflies everywhere flying over his head. And he walks about unbothered by anything. And he reaches out his arm and a butterfly lands on it. And it's very pretty. And then he wanders in deeper into the building and he's confronted all of a sudden by a full surgical team who are standing there. Doctors, nurses, technicians, all surrounding this bed. And you, as a reader, you realise it's for him at the same time he realises it, I think. Hmm. And from that point, it kind of goes off on one and follows that dream logic thing, hmm. which I don't think we should spoil, but there's... No, I agree. There, there's some yeah. strange moments in it, which only make yeah. sense, you no, know. I mean, in yeah, a, in it, it, feels like, it feels like a dreamlike scenario. I mean, rather than it being sort of post-apocalyptic, you know, I do get that sense of... It, feel, it feels like a dream. You know yeah, I mean? yeah. You, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know when you have those. Oh, I, I was, I turned up at this butterfly house, and then this happened, and then this happened. Yeah. It was really weird. Yeah, you know, it's like it does feel very much like that. Have you ever been to like a butterfly house in real life? Yeah, yeah, I have. Yeah, fucking horrible. <laughs> they they <laughs> supped upon my blood, Daniel. Oh no, they didn't. Uh, but, but it's, they're really hot in there, and because I, I was there with family going through one, and I was like, I'm not going in there. And so on, I said, because if one lands on me, I can't promise you I'm not going to kill it. Because I don't, I don't <laughs> want shit landing on me. What's the difference between a butterfly and a moth anyway? We don't like moths, do we? And they seem very similar to me. Yeah. They come out at night, don't they? The moths. Oh, do they? And oh, uh, the also, moths are bigger bastards. Yeah. yeah. Humanity really fucked up moths up, didn't we? By inventing light at night. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they, I'll say, I'll, I'll, just quickly to comment on the art on this, I think it's really solid. Oh, I, think, yeah. I really like Juan's yeah. work on it. He uses um, a lot of panels and pages that show close-ups and uses, because it's wordless, you have to use like small and sudden movements and and, and he uses a lot of work in it as a shorthand to story, mm. which I really like. Um, it's uh, it's almost a little bit of an oddity in the story. It's almost like a extended, not as not as um, nude, nude or violent as maybe a creepy and eerie, but it has that shock thing going on doesn't it yes it's a kind of a twist to it but this is i will say this this is a story set in a butterfly house 
what are more beautiful and colourful than butterflies? Hmm. I don't know why this is in black and white. I think there's a uh, chance there'd have been a chance there to make it a colour book. I, I, I think, um, yeah, I I tell you what would have been really nice, um, and it may be just down to the, the price of printing. But if mm. like the art, yeah, might black, be, yeah. yeah. If, if the art was black and white, but all every single one of the butterflies was colour, that, that would have been lovely, man. Be yeah. So yeah. Yeah. Good. yeah, 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 and also a story beat. Yeah. yeah, because that kind of plays into the end of it, doesn't it? You know, yeah. man, if they had done those yeah. spot spot gloss on yeah. the butterflies, that would have, have increased the printing price I, for about three I, I will say this. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And, I'm not I, saying it's bad. I enjoyed no, that. No, no, I really no. did. Yeah, I found yeah. it a really, a really pleasurable read to yeah. go through, and I think it really works well as a word. And the butterflies are drawn yeah. beautifully as well. Yeah, do you know what I mean? It's yeah. interesting. Yeah, you can't. I'll say they, they use that. texture as uh, as like uh, what, what's that zipper tone kind of stuff? Yeah. Yeah, there's a there's a great play on this, isn't there? Great yeah. watch almost at play in as well, you know. Um, but yeah, I think it works, and I think it's being it, at the ascent. Let's not call it Kickstarter because it's not Kickstarter, but Zooper crowdfunding it, which I think works. But I find it more interesting in a way in that this is the first of a series of one-off comics, um, which I think makes it and it, it becomes more interesting to me suddenly, rather than just being this sort of one-off project. I think if this is going to be the start of a series that. Paul, Juan, and Claire are working on in hand in hand, and keep releasing this as a series of one-off strange comics. It, it's almost like tracks on a Zapper album to me. You know, yeah. it becomes it becomes a, a whole, and and it actually becomes an interesting thing. And if there was a subscription service just to subscribe to these books by Paul, Juan, and Claire, I would be I'd be all over it. I think it's a really good idea. Yeah, they all know what they're doing. I think. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but it's nice that we read it, and and to be fair, we got what four comics through from Zoop, and yes. this is the one we all read and went, I like that one. That one, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Not to say the other ones weren't great, but this is the yeah. one that we sort of all stand went, yeah, I kind of dig. Well, it's an easy yeah. one to to discuss. Uh, yeah. The other ones require a bit more kind of uh, investigation. What was the other one called, Dan? Uh, the Isn't Spies, it? Sex and Spies. Is that the correct title? Uh, not sure. Uh, you let give me, it a shout because they're very let, kindly sending it through. If you just f- filibuster for a second, I'll look uh, it up in my folder. Yeah, it's called, I've got it here. It's called Sex, Spies, and Rock and Roll. There you and go. There's quite a few issues of those. There's volumes one, two, and then we got sent a preview of issue three as well. And that's um, a hit spy adventure series here. Um, uh, and they sent us things to catch up, featuring Scott. exclusive cover by Steve Scott. Yeah, so like an origin as well. series as well. An origin cover. Ah, yeah, there's right, lots of okay. it to it. Yeah. So yeah. they're kind of like, you get different stories within that, uh, right? Of different okay. artists of, about different spires and different events, but uh, it does get a bit racy. That one, I've got to say, good like that. Yeah, I, I say a bit racy. It gets really racy. There's mm. like it goes <laughs> graphic, full on gra- graphic. graphic, graphic scenes of graphic. Good, we like that. <laughs> we're all about that on here. Scenes of graphic, just <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you know what we're talking about. Yeah, oh, yeah, it's amazing yeah, yeah. we can talk about the absolute stuff we fucking talk about, and then we're falling over this bit. Trying yeah. To just yeah. Don't want to yeah. do a disservice. We should have the ACP grading, shouldn't we? Dongs, yeah. it should be this. You know, it's like close up yeah. brown eyes, it should be this. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No. So. <laughs> um, no. Yeah. So, yeah, that's my yeah. first one. Just that no. is called The Butterfly House, mm. published by, it's on Zoop currently. Go to Zoop, the platform, go and, go and back it, and it's published by Pink McKnight. There you go. Nice, perfect. Dan, what's I've got name? some quick fire recommends for okay. three of them. Okay, uh, I've got through my Kia Wordsmith from uh, Nice Time Bomb. Is that yeah? Time Bomb comments. Yeah. I wish Ian out. would put more effort into a page sometimes. Don't you? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> God, sla- man, slacking. Oh, <laughs> He's not a toysy. No, no. Ian's yeah. artwork on this is absolutely phenomenal. Like uh, this, yeah. yeah the, the kind of like the, the ethereal nature of some of the layouts and the artwork. Uh, absolutely love it. Uh, I, I did a pinup which is included in it, and I didn't really know much about the characters until uh, I, I started reading the comic. So I was kind of like, oh, okay. It was interesting seeing them, them pop up, but Ian's work, the, the expressions and just everything about it, love it. It's and one of the pin up pinups is not just by yourself. He's got one by Ian's daughter as well, which is absolutely lovely. Oh wow, I didn't know. Really that. nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She's um, I think she's quite busy doing some comics, so. Uh... Uh, yeah, keep an eye out, but that'd be good. I think we were oh. chatting about Ian yesterday, and we, I was chatting to Simon and Eamon, and we were saying, like, oh, you know, I think Eamon said to Ian, oh, any chance of doing this cover for DUI 3? And, uh, like, two days later, he, got to, he gets a fucking Picasso through on the email. Oh. You know, like, fucking hell. 
One Jesus. of the other things I've got to point out, the Grant Richards one he done as well. That's great. For that. Grant's That's great, man. Love Grant. Absolutely lovely stuff. I, I love following Grant on, on Instagram. He puts out some great stuff. Mm. Why that dude isn't doing like... I wish Vertigo was still here. He should be doing yeah. covers for them. And, you know, amazing. I was fucking bitching about Instagram. That fucking annoys me, that platform. <laughs> They've really <laughs> fucked that up. I used to... I, right, I've got these artists and I occasionally add artists to them. I just love seeing all their artwork. Now yeah. you go on and there's this bun- so much shit. Like, loads of stuff I'm not interested in. Videos of like like TikTok videos of someone pr- pratting around. So uh, what's this? I don't want this. So uh, yeah, they've decided I like the Office. I've never seen the fucking Office in my life. The American version. All I think to get is videos about that. Yeah. Uh, okay, so moving on to my second one, uh, okay. Spandex. I've recommended this one before uh, by Ross Radke. It's on Webtoon. I really okay. recommend Toshi Toshi AK the Botfly becomes the the sidekick and lover of the world's most powerful superhero masterpiece. And the, the latest update is uh, he's kind of working out some of the stuff with the, the plot. So he's done like an extended uh, intro uh, uh, prequel, a bit of like this character, the botfly of him kind of growing up. And he's got a lovely little backstory and uh, Ross's artwork is fantastic. I've got another book by him. He's done uh, like a kaiju comic, which I've got that sitting in my to read pile. All right, cool. Get stuck into, but... I still find the, the, about him. the the web the webtoons stuff fascinating. I'm like, uh, I don't know. It's part of me really likes it. Other things like, how's this going to work? And so there's there's a superhero comic, one of the bigger ones on the platform, which I've been looking at, called the Uniques, and that's been going since 2018, and it's got ridiculous amounts of updates on it. And when I first looked, I got the first one. I thought, well, how long is this going to be? It can't be that many if it's been got so many episodes because there's ridiculous amounts of it, but it, there's so much artwork and you're scrolling on it for ages. Uh, so give it a bit of a blurb on that. Powers are common, but heroes are not in the world. Uh, and it's third and final act. The Uniques is a story of growth change beginning in 1996 where the Uniques, people born with incredible powers, have changed the world. Uh, so I've only just started, I'm only a few episodes in, but it goes all the way. Let's go, how many episodes are on to? Season two, episode twelve. So there's there's a lot to read there. It's 115 entries, and if there right. was the first couple, you'd be reading fucking forever. So there's a lot to go through on that one. So uh, that's the uniques by Comfort and Adam on uh, webtoons, and you got Spand X by Ross Radke, uh, which is also on webtoons. I'll send that one through to you guys now on our little WhatsApp group, so you can uh, check that one. Nice, so, yeah. My two little quick, well, three quick recommends. Yeah, good stuff, man. Um, my one, which is obviously I was going to talk about it next week, is a Euro- well, last week last is week. a <clears throat> is a European book, um, by Enrico Marini. Uh, nice, well, it's, love it's, him. T- it's two yeah. books actually. It is his title Noir Burlesque, put out by uh, well, the translation put out by Europe Comics. Um, I was just going to read. Uh, there's part one and part two are available now. I was just going to pu- read part one for um last week's show before i um, came down with with the sickness oh ah, sorry um <laughs> <laughs> there was no need for that disturbed that's totally need for that. <laughs> no, 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 thank you um but yeah i was going to read part one um halfway through part one i then immediately bought part two to read excellent uh, that's gotta be done on the quite frankly frustrating uh platform that is <laughs> comiXology Ugh. that's another co- conversation because i have thoughts um but i did <laughs> read noir burlesque parts one and part two um for those that don't know um this is the synopsis for book one which i'm going to read um after a hold up gone wrong slick finds himself deep in the red with with local mafia boss rex but that's not the only thing setting them at odds. They also have their sights set on the same woman, the beguiling Caprice. She's inv- engaged to Rex and headlines his club, where she thrills the nightly crowds. She's off limits, but Slick has never been one for limits. And he has unfinished business with Caprice, who was once his own sweetheart before the war pulled them apart. After all these years, there's no love lost between them, but that doesn't mean the old spark isn't alive. And now they're playing with fire, Taking inspiration from the Hollywood noir films of the 1950s, Enrico Marini delivers a gritty graphic novel combining crime, love, jealousy and betrayal. Well, it doesn't say in the synopsis. And this is fucking amazing and has already jumped, jumped into my top five books of the year. Oh, wow. And, yeah, and, and boobs. And, yeah. uh, yes, it's a very sexy book. Mm. Um, 
and I think that's the way I would. I, it isn't like it's obviously for adults. This is a like a, a proper sort of black and white noir like story with with hints of uh, color in terms of like the red color which is used for Caprice's um, hair. Um, but it is a proper black and white, you know, gum, you know, mafia bosses and. I was watching him draw, um, draw some of these characters just a few short weeks ago. Yeah, it, he was it, in the OA tent drawing some of this stuff. It's, yeah, a, lovely, it's, it's a phenomenal uh, sort of. You, you can tell, like, this is a story that is told by someone who really sort of loves this sort of genre. There's a, there's a respect there, but also he wants it's it's Marini's version, and and Marini, you know, draws. He he can draw some sexy women. He can draw some handsome men. And they, they, I've got they, a feeling we got the first, but we got the first announcement around this book, because when I, I interviewed think, him in 2019, I asked him what he was doing, and he said he was moving on to a book called Noir. Yeah, yeah, right. I think yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 And this That's is cool, totally it? it. I mean, what what's beautiful about about this as well is a real. Anyone who's watched. Marini's artwork knows that he's not one to skimp on details. I mean, we've said between us before, Jesus Christ, you know. It's his not... style, just he applies his style to whatever the, the, the book wash, is. The ink washes yeah. and watercolours, but just the, there's double page spreads which are just city streets. Do you know what I mean? And you can see every window in the building. You can see the posters that are on the background of the, you know, the films that are in, that were showing at the pictures at that particular day, you know. The the people in the background, there's pattern on their dresses. That there's time relevant cars of the day, um, but with all that, you never lose track. The eye is always drawn to the focal characters, and um, I mean he's he's a genius. He's a absolute. It's a masterclass. We've been fans of uh, this creator for many years now, but if you haven't heard of him before get these books and immediately you'll go through and you'll want to discover like the the likes of raptors and uh what's the right oh, desert one? desert star De- eagles desert of rome, star, yeah, eagles, eagles, of rome. Yeah, eagles of rome um, there's a new one coming to that he's hinting he's hinted at that recently oh, really yeah. yeah yeah and obviously he's done some batman work as well um yep. they got him to do stuff like that um but this is if you if you fancy selling your house, you can probably buy some OA off him as well actually. yeah yeah and this is totally that <laughs> yeah. because every page of this you know, you'll read this book, and you'll read it quick. It's not, it's not a heavy read. It's definitely not a no. heavy read. It's, it's got, it's got a pace to it, as these stories do. You, you know the setup, um, and yeah, yeah. There's a few layers. You know, there's people backstabbing people. There's, there's certain storylines going on, but we know where we are with it, and there's, mm. a, there's a comfort to that sort, especially with a pulpy noir story. When you, when you want to read this kind of book, I know what I want from it, and this book delivers it. You know, I don't want to, you know... I think if you're in a book club, then you had a themed night, I would read this alongside a Black Sad. Oh, you know, God, yeah. That, yeah. Well, of, what that would make for a great what, night of reading. You know, if, if comic books and graphic novels could make double bills like movies do, Black Sad and this... Yeah, this but, would be the one after, wouldn't it? Because yeah, it's much yeah. saucier. But yeah yeah, 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 yeah. And it is, you know, it is saucy. But that's not to say, you know, there's still the crime story going through it. It's just got that real seductive element running through it as well because it's the traditional sort of erotic thriller kind of thing but in a pulp setting um every his character designs are wonderful you never sometimes when we read comics we lose track of who people are you never do that with him no you don't um, with him no yeah. the eagles of rome is a great one for that yeah. desert star yeah. man Fucking and some of the dialogue love that book some of the dialogue as well there are some there are some shocking moments what some of the characters say who's yeah. translated it is it your buddy um, who translated it? Uh, da, da, da. it Edward Govan. It's uh, he did. He uh, translated Dan, one we did. Dan Christensen. Oh, okay. Um, cool. Yes, this first. Well, it's, uh, of course, it's Doug. How do you say Doug Gore? Who's the publisher? Doug Gard. Doug Gard. Yeah, yeah. 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 Uh, originally went. It's, I mean, it's got the copyright twenty twenty one, but I know these came out at the end of last year, uh, end of twenty twenty two. Why have I? Why have I got a hardback of this, Vince? In French. Because um, I. Because you? you bought it for me for Christmas. <laughs> yeah, I thought. Yeah. I mean, there's, a, there's also there are artists that translate that transcend 
language barriers as well. Mm. Oh yeah, I just want to. So, I, I, I tried to buy all of his books hard back. Yeah, yeah. yeah, even though they're in French. Yeah. yeah. And as I was saying, like you'd read it quite quickly. You go through and you read this story as I did, just one night, an absolute wonderful night of just cu- cup of coffee, sat down and just read a great story. Um, and then you read it, and then you want to go back and look at some of the just pages, and you, and and you'll look at them and just think, I wish I had the money for the original art. <laughs> because yeah. every page, even if it's just a conversation between, you know, a couple of crime lords, in a go and have a look at his Instagram. Like you can see him drawing it. Yeah, really yeah. cool. Yeah. Man, when yeah. he's doing like the watercolor washes on his inks, it's like, mm-hmm. man, you're just such a practice pro. Yeah, because it's like boom, 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 doing this, yeah. doing the art, great. Yeah, um, super nice as well. What is? It? I hadn't seen him since 2019, and he walked through the tent I was in, and he said hello. Oh, oh fucking hey, nice guy. Yeah. Very, very yeah, yeah. nice, a very nice guy. Hugely talented guy. Clearly making comics of different genres um and just absolutely smashing it. You know. Um I love that he sort of he loves that sort of historical sort of genre though. Do you know what I mean? Mm. He, he loves yeah, sort they of They do out there, don't they? Yeah, yeah. Um and he does it very well. Always looking forward to what he's going to do next, but um until until then um Noir Burlesque Part One and Part Two are available now um, from wherever. You, just just search for them, um, and the translation is available on Comicsology. But please, please, please seek it out. You will not, you will not mm. miss it because these are special books. And um, yeah, I'm in love with pretty much every character in the, in this book as well. Which is mm. uh, I, need, I need to ask myself some questions. <laughs> so because I tell you what, that slick, he's a fucking handsome man. Anyway, <laughs> he, he does a bit, doesn't he? Yeah. <laughs> He's got he's got a jaw you could cut your meat on. <laughs> now, hang on, that sounded a bit weird. Tony, <laughs> what, what do you want? <laughs> Tony, the last one. Want? Last one is a book called Harrower. I'm going to invite you guys to look up the cover because I'm going to talk about that in a second. Um, okay. To be fair, I I impulse bought this because it's because our buddy is Matt Harrower, and so I just so I could send him the cover and said, "Is this book about you? Are the are you the angel of death?" Mm-hmm. Um, it's published by Boom Studios, created by Justin, written created by Justin Jordan and Bram Revel. Written by Justin Jordan, illustrated by Bram Revel, uh, lettered by Pat Brousseau, edited by John Moisan. Uh, uh, who's, who's, who's the artist? Uh, Bram Revel. Oh, wow. I mean, I know yeah. I love Justin jo- Jordan's writing, but... I'm right, well, hold on to your hats then, my friend. Yeah. Um, so it was a random read for me, this one, an issue one from Boom, a horror book from issue one. Didn't work out very well last time I did that, but let's let's hang on and see what happens. I, have you found the cover online, guys? Uh, there's it's Boom, so there's a million fucking pictures that come. Yeah, uh, it's kind of the red one with the black central image. Um, it's sort of like, gonna... it's sort of a magenta one. It's sort of like yeah, yeah, I, maybe I, that's I, it. Yeah, yeah. 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 That's I'm going to say up close it's a lovely idea so it's kind of got the female it's got the little group of teenage characters in the middle of almost in in the the darkness that makes sense from a distance you fucking you wouldn't tell what that was on a shelf in a car oh yeah totally yeah 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 yeah. um it's set in a small town in the u.s called barlow in new york state um and it opens with members of a local a member of a local the police heading home he pulls up outside his house in his sheriff's car and he seems stressed he seems worried angry something is wrong and he goes into his house, and in the hallway is this strange symbol marked on the wall, which is sort of, it looks like three hammers almost, just very simple. And he says, and he's, he can't tell whether it's written in red paint or maybe blood, you're not really sure. And he, he says, I don't regret, he's speaking to himself, and he says, I don't regret it, not a single goddamn thing. The only thing I regret is that I wasn't stronger, at which point he senses something else is there. So he pulls his gun out, and he's surprised by hands, you know, the old the old horror trope of, hands appearing through a wall or through a glass window or through a door and pulling you backwards. He's got he's caught out by that and he pulled down to the ground with this massive creature. And he's confronted by this sort of cloaked and masked, red-eyed, he looks like a warrior carrying an axe, towering over him, and, and he's killed. He's, he's immediately, his head caved in with the axe. And then we do the classic high school. We go to the high school and we get the, um, we're in a history class and the old teacher is coincidentally telling the class about this mark and it's the same mark that we've seen on the police chief's house wall and it's called a sinner's mark and he says it's a local and a culture it has local and cultural significance and is and that sinning will summon the harrower who is this character and there's a crude drawing of the warrior we saw on the chop on the chalkboard mm. you know in chalk of the character that we've seen in the in the previous opening sequence and the high school as is wanted to be as a jock a rebel a cool kid a party girl and they head out 
to a party that night and in town and things happen I'm not going to spoil it um and things happen and there's a twist put it that way now the only reason I'm recommending this is because of the art I think there's a nice sketchy look he, um with in sort of instinctual line mm. overlapping flat colors and he does he has a really lovely use of light and dark in this for example there's a moment where they're sitting in the class and you know when you're sitting in the class in the summer when you're at school and the light's coming in from outside and it's you know yeah. beating down on your face and through the window he, he does that really well mm. um and he's got that um instinctual less is more just pure energy in the work you know it lives on the page there's an emotion and 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 uh, coming off at you and i think it's really nice and he, he it's that little line of comic art but caricature but realistic but still caricature you know that sort of area someone like jay bone or darwin cook you know so something he lives somewhere in that sort of area of the house with those eyes in it mm. if it wasn't for the art i don't think i'd be recommending this it leans really? it leans really heavily into cliche okay. um every single okay. thing is a cliche um it is clearly a joining of the purge meets my bloody Valentine, you know, that sort of area. I think we, we had slasher horror, didn't we? Mm -hmm. And we had, you know, the group of friends at the lake or the high school group of friends or, you know, all this sort of thing. And then we had shit like scream and was it final destination, those movies and stuff like that, yeah. which took all the, the tropes from those horror films and they took the piss out of them. And then we kind of came out of that again, didn't we? And started, people started writing proper horror stories again. You know, with more imagine, imaginative settings, and this just goes all the way back, you know, to the pre-scream days, and just does it by rote. I don't know. I just uh, it has just high levels of predictability in it. You know who's going to be the wrong, and as soon as you see them, yeah, you, know, you know who's going to be the hero as soon as you see them. Do you think that's something that could possibly be turned on its head later on? But because well, because possibly. we're only getting one issue. Yeah, I maybe you know I mean? maybe you're right, man. I, mean, I can't predict yeah. the future, that, and I can't predict. But that's a that's a failing in itself because even if yeah, you're, I think so. even if you're breaking down the genre and you're going to put a spin on it, um, if you're having the sort of experience you've had with the first issue, that's a failing. You know, then it's probably better to do it as an OGN so you can read it in one. Yeah, and totally, man. Hmm. Totally. I mean, it, you've got to grab someone with the first issue, yeah. and this is. I don't know what Boom did it. Boom did it previously. Do you remember with that book that like I said was just a plane landing? Yeah, yeah, it was just like terribly boring, and I just, I just think uh, we know Justin Jordan is better than this. Yeah, you know all the stuff he's done. We know he's better than this. It just seems to be why that's what makes me books? think that there's more to it. But at the same time, well, I just think uh, because I, you know when you first said about it, I thought, oh, I, I might buy okay, it, yeah, buy yeah, it, yeah, yeah, yeah. As you're talking about, it. but because of what you said, I'm, I'll wait. Yeah, I read this yeah. before looking back at the creators. To be fair, because I hadn't really seen yeah, Brahms' yeah, yeah. style. And I really enjoyed the drawing, and then it just—it it was just beating me about the head. Of we've—I've seen this all before, man. Yeah. You know, okay, yeah. there's a vaguely clever idea of the serial killer, but ain't there all in every film and every comic? Yeah, you know, they have a little, little like a scream mask, or they have, yeah. you know, a, a you know, a hockey mask, for example. This is just, again, but I just. I'm recommending it because I really like the art. I really, I'd love to see this dude do other stuff. He he'd kill on a, you know, high school era Spider Man book, or he, you know, he'd kill on a like. He, there's not much, to, you know. I could see him doing a noir book as well with that stuff. Okay, I, 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 you know, I think I, I, I detected. I, th I think he could do a cool western as well. Looking at yeah, that's a good chat, man. Yeah. yeah, yeah, I think he could. Yeah, and I think um, I think Justin's better than this first issue, and I think Boom should be better than this first issue. You know, think about what you're doing. You got a great artist there. Make use of him. You know, there's yeah, there's loads he could be doing there. Um, but yeah, that's my second one. I recommend it just purely because of um, Brahm Revels art. There you go. Nice Arrow one. Issue one. Uh, interesting. One. Nice. Mm. Well, plenty of comics for you to check out as always, folks. And we hope you've enjoyed this, this episode. Yeah, there's tons of comics to put in there. The, yeah. the show, the show has got yeah going to be quite long this week. Um, so have a look at them, read down, read read them, add to your wish lists, and go forth and read loads loads of comics. And we hope you've enjoyed this week's episode and everything that's going to be we're going to be talking about in the lead up. There's only uh, well, ne next time is our penultimate three hundred ninety nine, three hundred ninety nine, yeah, 399. Jesus. So um, yeah, if there's anything you want us to shout about on next week's episode, there's several different ways you can get in touch with us. You can email us awesomecomicspod at gmail dot com. Follow us on the social media at the Awesome Pod on Twitter and Instagram. 
uh, we're, we've got a Facebook page, the Awesome Comics Talk Group. We've also got a Slack channel. Um, which, yeah. Join it. There's lots of different um, groups and talks. So if you want to talk Kickstart, there's a page for that. If you want to talk about comic creation, there, there's something for everyone and a wonderful community of people from all over the world on that Slack channel. Get in touch with us to find out. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, just love that play on words. Um, <laughs> Yeah, so get in touch with us to find out how to join that. It's easy, easy peasy. Um, and thank you for listening to us, whether it was on the website, awesomecomics.podbean.com. If you listen to us on Apple Podcasts, then please subscribe, leave a review. It helps get the word out about the show and everything we talk about on a weekly basis. And if you heard us on another network, such as Spotify, Amazon, Stitcher, Podnose, Podknife, what networks are we on, Tony? Are on the podcast network that we've kind of talked about throughout the show, which is No to Gatekeeping. <laughs> Here, here. Yeah, <laughs> um, which is I, I need to sort of just thought of that because of what um, our guests were saying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's open to everyone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. Just make make a comment, make a zing. Yes, yes. definitely. Yeah, exactly. Just make it, make it happen, people. That's no, that that's not a new cat, catchphrase. We shouldn't have it. Well, actually, make I guess, it happen. I guess we do have a catchphrase, which is going to happen in a minute, but um. I mean, I'll, I'll make that happen. Oh, yeah. Are we going to get <laughs> but, everyone to say it on the live one? Oh, of, course, of, course, of course we do. I, I want yeah, to yeah. see people get it wrong in so many ways. Anyway, where can people <laughs> find us online, etc.? Tony? com. Easy. Nice. Dan? You can find me on Twitter at Vanguard Comic, and you can read Vanguard at VanguardComic.com. Nice. You can catch me on social media at Jester Diablo. Thank you very much to our guests for joining us. Thank you t- for listening, as always. We hope wherever you are in the world, you're happy, healthy, and doing okay, because we love you. And Tony's in quite a good mood, so will he say it this week? Like I'll fucking ever say that. <laughs> <laughs> he says that, but I know that he actually said it a few weeks ago, and he can never take that audio back. I said it about one person. Yeah, it doesn't matter. I know there's love in your heart. You're, oh, there you're, is. You're no longer a tin man. Anyway... <laughs> But um, wherever you are in the world, read loads of comics, make loads of comics. Just tell people you know about comics that they should be reading. And as always, well, actually, what else should they do, guys? Stay awesome. Stay awesome. What? Come on, are you competing with each other now? Tony, 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 Tony did it. You had that nice. I uh, know. I fucked up there. Yeah. Come are you on, doing something you? else? No, I just fucked up. I was wait. I was kind of waiting for it, and you then I waited to, too long. Don't yeah, don't do yourself down. That was yeah, fine. Yeah, yeah. But you need to practice. You're getting like we need in, the four hundreds coming up. We've in four hundred, right. we got to nail it. All right, we got to nail it. Well, we got we, we got to wear our t shirts. Are we going to wear a tie again? Hey, yeah, like, yeah. I wear a tie. Do something special. Yeah, I'm not not yeah, wear a suit. Where, I'm not telling you where I'm wearing my tie. <laughs> Bye, everyone. On his knob. Bye. Corporate. See you. Later. <laughs>